It's time for Mount Vernon Rams football from WMIX Sports. Rams football on WMIX and WMIXSports.com is powered by the official voice of Rams Athletics, Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Mount Vernon Rams football is also presented in part by Red Lake College. Save thousands on your college education. Log on to rlc.edu. Tyler Toyota and Tyler's Buick GMC. Totally Tyler's. The medicine shop of Mount Vernon. State Farm insurance agent Tony Wilkes. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Second Chance Auto on Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Winning Edge. See what they can customize at winningedgeusa.com. Schmidt Chevrolet Cadillac of Mount Vernon. And also by Banterra Bank. Banking with local style. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. Landers Collision Centers of Mount Vernon and Salem. Big or small, Landers fixes them all. Schmidt Ford of Salem. People National Bank. Ford Square and King City Chrysler. You can count on us. And Bird Watson Drug of Mount Vernon. Two locations to serve you better. We take you to the WMIX Sports Mobile Studio, driven by Tyler's, where Chris Hugo and Danny Zerwinski are standing by for the Landers Collision Center's pregame show. Mount Vernon Rams football starts now. And good evening from Carbondale. So glad to have you with us, Mount Vernon Rams football. It is your Landers Collision Center's pregame show as the Rams look for win number two on the air. To do that, they'll have to beat the winless. Carbondale Terriers. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside. Jeff Crow provides the video angles at WMIXSports.com. Hunter Schrader is back at our Mount Vernon studio. The winless Carbondale Terriers are 0-5 on the season, but Danny, you can't see an 0-5 team and s on the schedule and just assume that that's going to be win number two on the year if you're this, the Mount Vernon Rams. Well, this Carbondale team is very, very hungry for a victory tonight, and one of those is against Mount Vernon. They don't want to go the rest of the year winless. They don't want to have to try to pack up the bags, and then, you know, next week host Altoff here and then have to play Marion, and then, of course, Harrisburg. Carbondale wants wins. They're out of the playoffs in 2014. Your underclassmen have something to play for, obviously, but four very important games for Carbondale, and they would love to get a win here tonight at home and get the taste and get Mark Albertini his first win as a head coach. Well, that is certainly a case where, on the flip side of that coin, if you're the Carbondale Terriers, you see a 1-4 and four Mount Vernon Ram team coming in, you think, well, maybe this is our chance to get our first win of the year, and you can't have that attitude either. No, and Mount Vernon right now, they're in a situation where it's, you know, basically a, a situation they have to play almost perfect football. It's a numbers game. The rest of the way we'll get to that in the keys of the game. But this is a situation that Mount Vernon has squarely put both shoulders against the wall. There is no wiggle room. It's kind of like playing dodgeball in school and you're the last man in. And everybody on the other side, about five or six guys, have dodgeballs. You've got to figure out a way to dodge those, which would be five, four balls now, because you've got to be able to get through and get four wins to get in the playoffs. Points won't be a problem. Wins will be. You have to have four more. There we go. The Mount Vernon Rams, of course, come in with a 1-4 and four mark. They are 0-2 in the South. Seven Carbondale. Winless in both. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll have our conversation from Saturday with Rams football coach Jared Shaner. Cautiously optimistic is the term that I would use when talking to him about this 0-5 Carbondale team. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk with Coach Shaner. This is Rams football powered by Community First Bank. Help tackle cancer with the MVPHS Future Business Leaders of America at the second annual Mount Vernon Rams Pink Out Game. On Friday, October 17th, the Rams host the Centralia Orphans at J.D. Shields Memorial Stadium. Get your WMIX Sports Winning Edge Pink Rally Towels for just $1. All proceeds go to the Susan G. Coleman for the Cure Foundation. Get your Pink Rally Towels in advance at Winning Edge on 9th Street in Mount Vernon. Or grab a towel and official Pink Out t-shirt on game night from the Mount Vernon High School FBLA. It's that simple. Cheer the Rams on the victory over the Centralia orphans and help tackle cancer. It's the second annual Mount Vernon Rams Pink Out Game, Friday, October 17th. Find your WMIX Sports Pink Rally Towels for just $1 at Winning Edge, 212 South 9th Street in Mount Vernon. Or contact FBLA advisor Julie Hayes at 246-5617. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. By now you have heard about our new One Checking product. The new One account is a high interest earning free checking account designed for everyone. Unlike other banks that pay interest on higher balance, this account pays interest on all balance. From high schoolers to Warren Buffett, One will work for you. You can talk to one of us at 244-3000 and learn about the details. 
One, exclusively at Community First Bank. You will be one happy customer. Member FDIC. Broadcasting live from the WMIX Sports Mobile Studios, driven by Tyler. This is Mount Vernon Rams football. Welcome back, Mount Vernon Rams football. WMIX, WMIX Sports.com. We can watch it online. Don't forget the Rams and the Terriers coming up in just a moment. Rams looking for win number two. Terriers looking for their first win of the year. Landers Collision Centers, call 1-888-LANDERS. That's one triple eight landers You can find them on the web at LandersAuto.com. Check out their expanded facilities in both Mount Vernon and Salem. Big or small, Landers fixes them all. Well, last week, no small task for the Mount Vernon Rams. They were able to keep it close at the end, losing 42-33 to the Marion Wildcats. We talked about last week's effort with Rams football coach Jared Shaner. We also got into tonight's game against the winless Carbondale Terriers. Here is that interview from Saturday morning on the Saturday Sports Show. Talking now with the head coach of Alberta Rams football, he is Jared Shaner. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? You know, pretty good. I take a look back at last night. I see a Ram drive, first drive of the football game, marching down the field within, I believe, a minute and a half at the very least. And taking a 7 nothing lead, and, and knowing what I thought it was going to look like at that point, really looks like the Rams to start, brought their A game, and played pretty well, especially on drive number one. Yeah, I thought we did. I thought we did. I thought we did. I thought we strong, and we had struggled with that uh, previous part of the year, and I was very lucky, um, you know, that first time, just to, you know, we kind of did what we wanted, and the nice play calls, and the feedback was pretty good. And, um, yeah, just moved it right down the field, took you at the point, and it's probably nothing, and you feel good about what you're doing, and um, it was a good start to the game. Was there a sense early on, it seemed to me, that the pace of calling plays for the offense was a little quicker? Was that a design and a game plan to kind of catch Marion off guard with the substitutions that they do? Uh, a little bit. We, we kind of talked about it throughout the week. And, um, you know, the other thing that I was, you know, last night, when you get in the game and you have momentum going your way, sometimes it's good to, you know, you get a little slow and you get going a little bit quicker. Um, and I think that helped us out. And then, uh, you know, a little bit later in the game, third quarter, we slowed it down a little bit more and we used the clock a little bit more. And that was just trying to get it back on our side and, um, you know, get the feeling back on our, again, back in our favor and, and keep the defense on the field longer. So we pushed it up a little bit last night and, um, yeah, just, just kind of the feel of the game and pace of the game. A quick start by your team. Marion comes back to fumble kickoff and then Marion goes ahead. I thought your team did a great job last night not falling off the rails. So sorry for themselves. It seemed like the battle back to tie the game up and to get things going your way. I thought that was a, a very nice thing that your team did last night in the sense of one and three not falling backwards but going forward and getting back into the ball game. Well, yeah, I was definitely happy about that part. And the, the first half, like you said, we, um, you know, we traded scores early on when we told me to kick off. And, um, you know, they went down and scored and went up, and our team responded and, and went right back down the field and scored again. So, um, you know, I was very, very pleased with that. And, uh, you know, even at halftime, we, we felt pretty good about what was going on. Offense had moved the ball really well in the first half and felt like we could continue to do that. And, um, you know, the third quarter came out and really played out exactly how we wanted it to be for, you know, the first uh, 10 or 12 minutes of the quarter. And that was, we thought the halftime about, um, you know, we just keep off the run with the top defensively, and then they put a long drive together, and then that's kind of one where we use a little bit more clock, um, and took the lead, and, and we did that. I think we went up 25, 21, if I remember right. Uh, with only, gosh, I think it was maybe about two minutes left to go in the third quarter, but it really worked out well, and then, um, you know, gave up a long touchdown pass play, and, and things just uh, obviously went, went bad from there, and we couldn't, couldn't bounce back again. A well-played game, I thought, by both teams. Not a lot of penalties, not a lot of turnovers. A lot of excitement, both offensively and defensively, with big plays. I mean, this is kind of a typical of very Mount Vernon to get together on a football field, two good programs when they play, and I thought last night was another great game in this series. Well, I did, I did too. Um, for the last three years, I thought the good game really kind of good about it. That's been great games. We, we had the ball late there two years ago. Um, and put a drive together that, that would have let us take the lead and fall down full down. Last year, close to the other time, being at home. Um, and then last time, it was a back and forth battle. They took a little bit of control in the fourth quarter, but, but uh, you know, a six step fighting and, and punch one in there towards the end. Um, but yeah, it was a good series, and um, I really like those, 
those guys, uh, they were very well coached. Um, Terry Martin, you know, find a, a, a nice guy in front of him. I believe that him and I have a lot of the same values and uh, what we've got to do with our football program. And uh, you know, he's a guy that I, I, I respect a lot. Around the course of the, now as we take a, a look forward at kind of what's to come in week number six, the Carbondale Terriers hosting the Mountford and Rams next week. Carbondale's a team uh, coming in 0-5 after a loss last night to Cahokia. Is that something where it's kind of easy to look at that 0-5 record if, if you're a football player and say we should dominate them next week? How do, you, how do you kind of keep that mentality in check and keep those feet on the ground knowing that the, that's an 0-5 team next week? Yeah. Um, one thing <laughs> You hit it on the head. If you're, a, if you're a high school football player, you might look at, look at it like that. Um, but I can promise you there's a, a whole bunch of coaches here that are going to remind our guys that, you know, we're one and four. Um, and uh, we're going to have to go and compete in battle if we want to get our second one of the season. So that'll be a, a reoccurring team throughout the week, I'm sure. And, um, we won't let our kids. Uh, that's on the fact that they don't think Carbondale's going to receive. Speaking of Carbondale next week, backs against the wall, four wins needed to get playoff eligible. The pressure obviously is there. Will it be an issue? Will you bring it up or you just kind of let it go because everybody knows what's the, what, the, what the setup is for the next four weeks? Um, you know, we've talked about it all year, the playoffs are the goal of ours, and I, thought, I did not think we'd be anywhere near where we're at right now record-wise, uh, but we are. And, uh, you know, with the I'm going to give the kids the same message as I'm giving them. Um, you know, I want to go to the playoffs. We want to go to the playoffs. Um, but ultimately, you know, we have Carbondale on the next week, and that's it. Um, you know, we just can't worry about the other three games after that. Um, I've been saying this for a couple weeks now. We're good enough to beat any team on our schedule. Uh, we are not good enough to do it when we make the mistakes that we're making right now. Um, we're going to really play this all season. Um, I think that's Talked internal week and you know one or two games turns into one four or maybe two fours and that's, that's what we're losing by. Um, so yeah, I, I I think they'll probably get brought up. Um, you know, it's no more pressure. I, I think the fact just comes down to we got to play better football. I think if we do that consistently, we played pretty well for three quarters last night, um, and three quarters isn't good enough. Um, so I think if we do that for four quarters and Friday night, we can get a win at Carbondale. Well, and of course, Carbondale, a team now coming in third coach in three years. Obviously, going to be a different philosophies with Mark Albertini versus Nick Hill versus Coach Dan Kester prior to that. Do we know anything about the Terriers at this point, looking ahead to week six? Uh, you know, well, I haven't had a chance to um, see our extended uh, currently and uh, get ready to be out here in just a few minutes. So, um, so I haven't had a chance to watch them or see them yet. Um, I think there may be a little bit more run base than there were last year or so today. Um, you know, I just know at home, you know, they're, they're in a very similar boat to us, and they're looking down to the one four teams and saying, hey, there's a chance to get on the board, but um, let's put a game together and, and get a win at home and feel good about what we're doing. So I know they took us out to play hard and compete. Um, again, for us, it just comes back to um, being more consistent. You know, we got to take that three quarters of effort and, and execution that we had last night and, and turn it into a complete game. Final question, of course, is our social media question of the week, and this week's perfect question for coaches, players, and sports people in general. The question this week is, what is the best way to congratulate a teammate? We're talking like fist bump, handshake, high five, low five, comment, whatever. What's the best way to congratulate a teammate? Um, I think right now, I, I don't know if this kind of cycles uh, like fast or something, you know. Um, with our guys, it, it's a congratulations, and it's also, it's, it's a long win, too, but um, our guys, if, if someone makes a big play, one of their buddies is probably going to get up behind them and give them a good hard squat on the rear end. Um, and it's, uh, it's a, I guess it's kind of a, show of affection and a congratulations and, and nice job. Um, so if somebody does something good, they're, they're getting a good hard smack on the back and, uh, you know, that's kind of a, in a loving way, um, and that's what our guys kind of do right now. So uh, it seems a little bit strange, and I think that's um, 
when when Zach was making big plays last year, he probably had a score for it. These guys are giving him a bunch of squat. I love it. That's old school right there, Shader. I love it. <laughs> of course, looking forward to the Rams next week. Carbondale Terriers on the road. Hoping to see you win number two on the season for the Bob for the Rams. Coach Shader, good luck. We'll see you Friday night. All right. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate it. As you can hear, disappointment, but yet optimism in the voice of Jared Shainer this past Saturday morning. You can hear Coach Shainer every Saturday on the Saturday Sports Show, AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. It's right after the 8 o'clock news each and every week right here. We have plenty more to talk about on your Landers Collision Center's pregame show. We'll talk about what the Rams need to do here tonight to get a win, get win number two, and continue their playoff hopes against Carbondale. We're on the road here at Carbondale. Stay tuned. We'll also talk about the rest of your week six action coming up. This is Rams Football from WIX Sports. It's not easy to decide what you want to be when you grow up. Even if you're well into adulthood, so many options. Firefighter, welder, lighter, nurse, artist, chef, police, architect, and more. Red Lake College offers over 100 degree and certificate programs. And now you can find the one that fits at the RLC Open House on Thursday, October 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Ina campus. Still not sure what you want to be? Be a warrior. See you at the Open House on Thursday evening, October 9th from 6 to 8 at the RLC campus in Ina. Rams fans, check out the Rams Apparel at Winning Edge. They have the largest supply of MVPHS t-shirts, hoodies, golf shirts, caps, bags, and more. If you can't find the right item, they'll customize it for you. In addition to the great selection of Rams gear, Winning Edge specializes in screen printing and embroidery, which are the longest-lasting promotional items. Winning Edge will get you the right active wear for your business, school, or event, and will help you make a lasting impression. Find Winning Edge downtown at 212 South 9th Street, on the web at winningedgeusa.com, and on Facebook. Your home for the Mount Vernon Rams is WMIX Sports, powered by Community First Bank. Welcome back, WMIX, WMIXSports.com, the Mount Vernon Rams and the Carbondale Terriers coming your way here in just a few moments. Of course, we talked about the Rams needing to keep winning to have any hope at a postseason berth. Obviously, you figure five wins would get them in with the playoff points they are projected to have. But right now, one and four on the Euro and two in the South Seven Conference. In D.C., these Rams are going to have a lot of work to do here tonight to beat this 0-5 Carbondale this team. This Carbondale team, as we said, is pretty hungry trying to get a first win for Mark Albertini. And having been around a couple of teams when you're winless after five weeks, you're pretty hungry to get another win. You're wanting another win so bad you can taste it. And, you know, some teams like to come out. you got a home game this week, got a home game next week against Altoff. This Terriers team's hungry. They've been close in a few games this year. You know, played Heron tough in week two. They gave Waterloo a little run early. Well, Centrea gave him struggles all the way through. So this is not a bad football team. Just not quite got enough to get four consistent quarters in to get a win and for, for first-year coach Mark Albertini. And the thing is, this is their third head coach in three years, and that's tough on any program, even a big school like Carbondale. Certainly seems to be. And, of course, you take a look at their schedule. Carbondale plays half of the river-to-river -river Ohio division between Murphy in week one, Heron week two, Harrisburg in, coming up in week nine. Waterloo, of course, fills out that non-conference slate in week three and it's a Waterloo team that's much improved you take a look at what Carbondale's done this year obviously winless to this point but losing two as we actually need to stop to honor America we'll take a break we'll come back this is Rams football from WMIX Sports the medicine shop in Mount Vernon provides personal health care on a level that no big box chain or mail order service can that's why consumer reports ranks independent drug stores like the medicine shop number one in customer service and satisfaction I'm pharmacist and owner Eric Black. Did you know that independent pharmacies like the medicine shop receive no kickbacks from the drug manufacturers? This means that the advice you get from our staff is based only on what's best for your health. Did you also know that we offer access to your medication when you need it? It's no long wait for hoping that the mailman shows up with your medicine before you run out. We employ local people and pay local taxes, which means a positive economic impact for this community. Finally, we know how busy your life is. That's why we offer free delivery to work or home. Give me a call today and I'll show you how easy it is to switch. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Or give us a call at 242-8776. There's no other Toyota dealership like it in the region. It's totally checked out. Cheap and totally new. I heard Toyota. Like car heaven. It's totally brand new. Totally built. You. Welcome to Tyler Toyota, the best car and truck buying experience in Southern Illinois. 
Total. Total. Totally. We're celebrating the grand opening. Newly renovated and highly celebrated Tyler Toyota. Totally. Toyota. Watch the Rams online at WMIXSports.com. Powered by Red Lake College. Landers Collision Center is big or small. Landers fixes them all. Call 1-888-LANDERS. That's 1-888-LANDERS. You might need them before you know it, so be careful out there on the roads. Tonight, of course, the Mount Vernon Rams on the road here at Carbondale. We're talking about the stability of this program. Talked about how they were starting out this season, obviously winless. Lost to cross-county rival Murfreesboro to open up the year. Another Ohio Division foe and Heron in week number two. When we take a look at what the Carbondale Terriers are put together, they have struggled somewhat, obviously, if they're an 0-5 team. But it, you get the impression that with a little bit of stability, they might have a possibility of a couple of wins down the road. A couple of wins down the road. You look at the fact that maybe a Harrisburg down at the end. You only have two more games left here at home this weekend, next week with Mount Vernon and Altoff. you got to go to Marion in week eight. You figure Carbondale will be an underdog there. Week nine on the road at a Harrisburg team that's not been very strong this year, and by that point will probably be well out of playoff contention. So this Carbondale team has some opportunities here in the last four weeks, a couple of them if you count tonight, with a chance to win the ball game here and get a win for Mark Albertini in his first year. Well, I think that's the thing you want to do if you're this roster of players trying to get a coach his first varsity win. And for Mark Albertini, obviously coming in in his first season, you think that those wins are going to come as long as he sticks with this program. And, and you get the impression he will. He's filled out his coaching staff nicely. And one thing I noticed when looking at his assistant coaches is seeing former Terrier coach Fred Hines on the staff. And that always helps. That's kind of, you know, Brad Panko has helped at Mount Vernon a little bit. Al Way has helped a little bit in different schools. So when you can bring in a guy with as much, you know, information and knowledge, there's Skip Henninger's another guy that, has a lot of knowledge. Joe Beavis is another guy that has a lot of knowledge from the from the ranks of the assistant coach and the head coaching ranks. So this is a Carbondale staff that is very well aware of what Mark Albertini liked to do. Of course, his lineage at Mark Albertini played at Murfreesboro, was an outstanding prep player, graduated in 1997, played a variety of spots, McKendry being the main, had a, had a drink of water, I guess you could say, a cup of coffee with the Cleveland Browns. Then came here to Carbondale after that was over, and once that was over, he's worked his way up. He's been an assistant here for years. He knows the program, the school, the city, the kids, and now he gets his chance. But he is also the third head coach in three years, which, as we said before, really can hurt a program no matter the size of the school. Well, no doubt about that. Of course, you take a look at how this series has gone the past so many years, and this has been a team the Rams have found success against, the lone exception being a couple of years ago right here on this field in the 09 season. But other than that, the Rams have pretty well been able to, to hold a lead in this all-time series as a play. Well, and it's went six years. They've split 50-50 along the way the last six years, three and three. And the last real streak for a team to win was Mount Vernon. They won in five, six, seven, and eight. Carbondale snuck in in four. Mount Vernon won in three, two, and one. So uh, from 96 to 2004, Carbondale got four wins. Mount Vernon got four wins. But after that, Mount Vernon had a little edge, except for the three times that Carbondale has won the last couple of times. So the last four or five years. So this series, for some reason, when Mount Vernon and Carbondale play, you never know what to expect other than a rather close ball game because these two schools, for some reason in football, have a way of playing close games. And especially down here at Frank Blyer Field, this place has kind of been a house of horrors at times for the Mount Vernon Rams. Well, indeed it has, and it has for so many. Speaking of so many, we'll talk about some of the others in action tonight in Week 6. We'll take a break, come back on your Landers Collision Center's pregame show. This is Rams Football from WMIX Sports. Looking for a free checking account that gives you rewards or high interest? Introducing to Sing at People's National Bank. A Visa check card, e-statement, mobile banking, money cash nationwide ATM, only $100 to open, and you get to choose between cash and cash back. Stop by People's National Bank, visit peoplesnationalbank.com, or give me a call, Monica Will, 241-6924, for details and qualifications. People's National Bank, your home for the best rewards checking on the market. Qualifications and rules apply. Member FDIC. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Chrysler Dodge, Jeep Ram dealer at King City Chrysler Center, Mount Vernon. Right now, receive 0% plus $3,000 cash back on all Ram 1500. You heard right, 0% plus $3,000 cash back. Chrysler wants to possibly lower your payments on Motor Trend Truck of the Year two years back to back, running for 2013 and 2014. 
So they are bringing back 0% financing and big cash back. We have a great selection of crew cabs and quad cab trucks, two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Hurry in today to King City Chrysler Center, 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, where you can count on us. This is Mount Vernon Rams football, powered by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome you back here on AM 940. Watch us live at WMIXSports.com. Fresh content on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for your social media likings tonight. So glad to have you with us. Chris Hugo with Danny Zawinski alongside. Jeff Crow handles the camera feed at WMIXSports.com. Hunter Schrader is back at our Mount Vernon studio. We take a look at games in week six amongst the Southern three conferences. In the South 7 tonight, Marion is at outs off proverbial and the facto conference championship, some would say, on the line tonight. Centralia is at Cahokia. We take a look at the River to River. Carterville at Nashville. Pinckneyville at AJ. Sparta is at Duquoin. While on the Ohio side, Benton is at Harrisburg. Massac at Heron. And Murphy travels to West Frankfort. Conference play in the BDC, as always. Carmi is at Hamilton County. CZR at Chester. El Dorado is at Fairfield. SVW Devil, W. How about the Red Devils? They travel to Vianna Goreville tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Quite a few interesting games in the. Week six here in the big three in the south. Marion at Altoff might be number one. Yeah, yeah, but the number one game probably, in my opinion, is Carterville at Nashville tonight. Battle of the Unbeatens in the River Mississippi Division. Another game of interest, I think, is Pinckneyville at A.J. The Panthers are reeling right now. A.J.'s trying to find their footing. That's an interesting game. Harrisburg, if they can win the night at home against Benton, gets to 3-3 three and three with three weeks left to go with plenty of playoff points. After that, it's kind of hit and miss. El Dorado Fairfield has potential, but Fairfield is a heavy favorite in that one at home at the train yard. I think so, but taking a look around the conference tonight, Marion Altshoff and, and some of the people who think that that is the proverbial conference championship tonight. I mean, Marion still has Centralia. Altshoff did beat Centralia last week, but all in all, I mean, I know that will be a good one over at the Candy Cane at Lindenwood. It will be, and that's what I'm looking forward to, to see what Altshoff can do is – some of our media brethren giving us a hard time uh, via the text, but uh, so that's what we're laughing about. Is I, I kind of don't. Agree. I kind of like you. I don't agree with how people are kind of hyping as a championship game when Centre is laying out there having played out all tough. That might just be a bump in the road. And Centre, of course, gets Marion next week at home. It wouldn't shock me to see the Orphans maybe get a sneaky win next week at home against Marion and kind of deflate that thinking tonight that that's the championship game at Belleville. Well, I think the Ray Collins crew definitely going to have something to say about that. Of course, Marion and Altoff, depending upon what happens there, gives you a nice glimpse. But let's take a look at this that game from last week between Mount Vernon and Marion. Rams lost 42-33. That's a Marion team that outside of a few big plays in the fourth quarter, that's a close game with Mount Vernon. Of course, Mount Vernon led after three. Marion, the first play from scrimmage in the fourth quarter, scores a touchdown. But really, you take a look at a Mount Vernon team that played outs off pretty close to two points. I still think Centralia could have a, a significant say in the South 7 when they play outs off. I think Centralia's er, going to have a significant say there. I think to Centralia, if they could, you know, have a significant way the way Mount Vernon's season's going to play out. If Mount Vernon, you know, and, and here's the thing. Three, the next three games for Mount Vernon are very, very winnable against Carbondale, Cahokia, and Centralia. Of course, it's at home. The kick is that Mount Carmel game at the end. You have to have those three wins to make that game obviously mean something. I think if Mount Vernon will get three wins, that game at Mount Carmel might have a little different flavor to it, obviously. It might give Mount Vernon an opportunity to win in a place that not a lot of people win at. That is very true, and we will see what happens over the course of these next few weeks with the Rams schedule. We aren't that far removed from gameplay tonight. About 90 seconds to go from the kick. You're on homecoming night at Carbondale as the Terriers celebrating here in October. Will they celebrate their first win or will the Rams continue their road to the playoffs? Carbondale, Cahokia at home, Centralia at home on pink out night, and Mount Carmel on the road are all that stand in the way of a Rams and a playoff berth. That's a quite a significant road and a road to hoe even for the Mount well, Rams. You hope maybe from the Rams perspective that you know, you get to the point like, okay, Carbondale's got homecoming this week, a lot of distractions off the field, a lot of stuff going through their heads. Got to get clothes, got to get tuxes, got to get flowers, got to get food, got to get pictures, got to get people in the right places. You hope maybe that's gotten to Carbondale a little bit and maybe gets him off guard a little bit here this week. We will see if they are caught off guard. Maybe caught off guard by the Mount Vernon Rams coming in here 
knowing that they must win to stay playoff eligible. For the Terriers, obviously eliminated last week with their fifth loss, are going to be pretty well mathematically eliminated out of the conference race as of right now. I shouldn't say eliminated for good, but as of right now, sit back enough in the cellar that it could be difficult to gain a conference championship with the five losses to get into the postseason because I, I think it's probably going to end up being a 4-1 and one or maybe a 3-2, and two, but Carbondale not out of it yet, but for the conference race, but with five losses technically eliminated from postseason. A decision. strong north wind, northwest wind tonight. Of course, this field runs north and south, so it'll be cutting across the field from the left end zone and north end, kind of towards us at the 50-yard line. That's kind of what's going on or down to the left end of the south end zone. So Carbondale will kick off and will kick into that wind. And so Mount Vernon will have the advantage here in the first quarter of having the win at their backs. Well, and the kicker tonight is, I believe, of the left-footed variety, yep. number nine, Michael Stuckey, a 6'2 senior, weighs 165 pounds. Back to return for the Rams, DeMontez, Miller Gray, and Jesse Green. Important for him being the lefty, you have to play the draw. That's true. So you've got to be able to play that. You know Power all fade, about that. actually. Here comes the Ooh. kick. It's going to be off the ground, but there's Drew Hester up front to get it. He'll actually mm. tip it. It'll be first down for the Rams close to midfield. What are some keys to tonight's game if the Rams want to come away with their second win? It's a numbers game right now. You've got to play 16 straight consistent quarters, eight halves of solid mistake-free football. That'll get you four wins. The only problem is you have zero mulligans left to take now. You can't have another mess up or another loss or your playoff hopes will disappear. First and ten for the Rams between the hashes from their own 47-yard line. They will go right to left and they're away whites tonight. Same solid black helmets with the Ram on the right. Quarterback Dylan Reeves will be under center. To the right side, it'll be Way. To the left, it'll be Xavier Tyus. Miller Gray, Hester, and Heiner are your backs in the backfield with Heiner in motion. Pitch is going to go to the right side to Miller Gray. Leading rusher this season, pass midfield to the outside far sideline. <laughs> nice leap there at the 45. Watch out. Now going to try to cut back to the near side, find some running room. He's at the 40. 35 30. He could be gone. 25 20, 15 10, 5. Touchdown, 53 yards for DeMontez with a great no flags, and the Rams take a 6-0 lead. Well, how about that? He got pinned in and turned it around, reverses field and goes 47 yards, and just 18 seconds into the game, Mount Vernon's on top. Well, there you go. And DeMontez Miller Gray with that is now at 688 yards on the season. Unbelievable. That's crazy. <laughs> that was unfathomable. How about that run? He was pinned in over there, got hung up, hung up, and all of a sudden, reverse field, a lot of black jerseys on that right side of the field, nobody home. And with 11.42 left in the first, Rams lead 6 nothing. High snap. Good hold, though. Millwood was able to get it down, and that is going to be a good extra point for Dalton McGowan. And, Danny, big thing last week, as it's now 7 to nothing. Rams lost, left an awful lot of points on the field between missed point after attempts and, and two-point conversions have failed. Well, it was, and that game last week was key because everything got unclose after a while because of that. And Mount Vernon jumps out on top here. Not only that, but they get the extra point kicking with the win. So the Carbondale Terriers now will have to have it starting from down 7 nothing. They tried the onside kick. It didn't work, and man, oh, man, look what happened. Beauty First Bank of the Heartland is the official voice of high school sports here on WIX. That was one great play by DeMontez Miller. Gray, make your own great play with a free high yield. Interest checking account. Community First Bank, just ask for one. One means more. Member FDIC. Well, we're going to learn a lot about Carbondale right here. Teams that are on a downslide, sometimes that happens. It starts to get to you after a while. That it does. James Owsley, one of the return men, deep for the Terriers. As Dalton McGowan is going to handle the kickoff tonight. And this one's not going to go very deep. Actually, it'll be picked up at about the 30. Slipped to tackle at about the 40. Carbondale will have it first and 10. In their own territory, about 11.38 to go here in the first. 7-0 Mount Vernon. And in case you're just joining us, first play from scrimmage for the Rams was actually a pitch to the right to Devontae Miller Gray. He runs it in 53 yards for Vader. Yep, 53 yards it goes. So it'll be spotted at the far hash. Terriers in their all-black uniform. Some are wearing pink. It is October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. As the Terriers will have it first and 10 from their own 40. Glad to have you with us on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. AM 940, as you know, WMIX Mount Vernon, a free service from Withers Broadcasting. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski, quarterback, trying to get the Rams to jump off sides out of the shotgun with Winfield, did. and he does. Yep. They did. And that's a problem. Five-yard penalty. 
We'll push it up to the 45-yard line. Ball spotted on the far hash. Left to right again go the Terriers as you look at your video monitor on WMIXSports.com, whether on your mobile device or your computer, or maybe even your smart TV. We'll see what happens here as Carbondale will continue. More of a pistol formation for Mark Albertini's team. Haven't passed a lot with success this year. Have done a lot on the ground, however. And this is going to be a quick pass. Looking to the near side. That's going to be in and out of the hands of P.J. or excuse me, LaCorda Kill, who thought he had more. He was looking downfield before he had it. Tipped off his fingers. Yeah, looked downfield, didn't get it, and that's a problem there. That'll bring a second and five for Carbondale. Ball again is on their own 45-yard line. Far hash. We'll see what they can do with it here. We're well below the 11-minute mark now. Well, difficult to see the clock on the scoreboard from here. There's about that's a fast run from or a fast series for the Rams on the DMG 53-yard touchdown. I don't think anybody was expecting that to happen first play from scrimmage, but it did. Rams lead seven to nothing here in the first. Quarterback Calvin Whitfield, a senior, he's looking downfield to pass again. Throws behind his intended target. We'll have a flag on the play. Well, Not sure why. I don't know. Well, the side judge threw one. Then the back judge threw one because he wanted to get his flag out there about five seconds later. So we'll see what it is. I got a feeling it's either pass interference or a hold on the Rams. There it is. It is pass interference. Okay. So from where the flag drops, it'll be 10 yards and a first down. Not automatic, just 10 yards and a first down. Second flag for 15 yards for in this ball game, I should say. Very interesting, especially when the contact came after the ball had passed. But be that well, as it may, it'll be spotted yeah. on the 40 in Ram territory. Far hash for Whitfield and the Terriers. Two tight ends in the set alone back in the backfield. This is going to be Slaughter. Slaughter to the right side. Going to be stopped for a loss. It'll be Brighton Bowers, I believe, on the stop. It'll be about the 41-yard line for a loss of one, depending upon the spot. It'll be second and 11 for Carbondale. One of those deals, pass interference is pass interference. Uh-oh. End of one. Jasper 21, Mount Carmel, Illinois, zip. Wow. Hello, that's not kosher for the Golden Aces tribe. 11.20 left to go here in the opening quarter. Mount Vernon on top of Carbondale, 7 0 if you're just joining us, and we're gonna, already going to have a flag. Really? Seemed awfully quick. Illegal we're going to get the laundry out tonight, Mr. Hugo. So it'll there be second and 15 now for Carbondale. There are some guys that haven't thrown their flag in a while. They're ready to throw. They're in a postseason baseball spirit. I would say so. WMIX Sports Mobile Studios driven by Tyler's. Why play the financing waiting game? Become pre-approved right now. Apply online at tylertoyota.net. It's totally Tyler's. So second and 15 for the Rams. Ball spotted between the hashes on the Mount Vernon 45. Second and 15 for the Terriers, I should say. Whitfield, the quarterback, is going to hand off. This will be a quick handoff. This looks to be Sidney Ousley running off tackle up the right. Gets to about the 35-yard line. That's going to be a gain of roughly 10-ish. It'll bring up third down for Carbondale. Manageable play now coming up for the Terriers. Nice little quick hitter. Pair of Owsleys out there for the Terriers, Sydney and James for the quarterback, Calvin Whitfield. See what the Terriers can do here on third down. Third down at about five, shy of the 35-yard line. Rams stacking the box with this Carbondale formation. Two tight ends, a couple of backs. And now let's see what happens. It's going to be a double handoff as to the left side. This will be James Owsley. He has some running room, and it's going to need a tackle to save a touchdown. It will get a nice tackle in first down yardage now. A gain of about seven. For Owsley on the ground, that was James Owsley. Pretty nifty little play, the double handoff in the backfield. you got to be quick on your marks and do it in rhythm or it will not work, and the Mount Vernon defense can do anything about that well-ran play. 9.45 to go in the first. Ball's on the 27-yard line in Ram territory. Carbondale looking to move the chains again. First down for the Terriers. Ball spot on the far hash. Left to right goes Carbondale. The quarterback, Calvin Whitfield in the backfield. Quick handoff coming to the near side. This is going to be Slaughter. He's going to get some running room as he breaks to about the 20. Going to be brought down inside the 20 at about the 19. Could be a gain of about 8 depending upon the spot. For Slaughter, nice run to the outside to the right. Got to the right and then used a nice little well-positioned stiff arm at the face mask of the defender. And that case right there, he did the defender went down to the ground and there was nothing to do but 8 yards. Good, hard, solid run. Carbondale subs a lot of gentlemen in and out on this offensive threat. Let's see what happens with Whitfield and the Terriers here. It'll be second and about two or three. Ball just inside the 20-yard line on the near spot, or near hash on a spot. Whitfield 
working out of the shotgun here. He is going to drop back to pass. Took one step, and this one's going to be in and out of the hands Ooh. of his intended target right at the goal line, Tyler McCormick. That'll be a drop, and it'll be a third down. Well, that's how wide receivers become defensive backs, Mr. Hugo. Those who can't catch the ball end up being defensive backs. It is third. You don't have to catch it as much. <laughs> have to bat it away defensively. It is third and three for the Terriers on the Mount Vernon 20. 8.49 left to go on the first. Still a 7-0 ball game. Rams scored on their only play from scrimmage thus far. It was DeMontez Miller-Gray running 53 yards for a score. The point after obviously is good. Under center now for the quarterback Whitfield. Deep back is going to be Slaughter. You would assume maybe try to get some running room or draw off sides. Is this going to be right up the gut? Heiner and company in on the tackle. On the Carbondale runner, and uh -oh. I don't think this has enough. It's I'm watching the guy on the far sideline. Well, yeah. Mount Vernon kids wanted to wish happy homecoming to a couple Terriers. Didn't get as far. Now it's fourth and what, about a one? Long one and a half, two? We'll see what Carbondale likes to go with. The ball is on the right hash. If you wanted to do some trickery and or spread them out, you can go left and try to use some of that wide, spacious field to to your advantage. We'll see what they do. They're going to work the quarterback Whitfield from under center. A bunch of backs in now for this Carbondale team, including Jordan Roseman. He is going to be the fullback that gets the carry. It looks like the Rams might mm. have stopped them short. Oh, judge on the far side, though, might suggest other things here on this fourth down. Did they get the conversion as Roseman got the carry? It's a gain of two, it would appear. Rams thinking it's going the other way. No signal from any of the officials yet. They're going to measure. measure. I think they're going to have our, to. Well, our angle here is not the best. We're not complaining, but we're not. We're saying that it's not the best for us to see if this is a first down or not by our angle. We're kind of sitting near the 50, but we got a kind of side angle here, so it's a little tough from the view. This is going to be interesting, but first down by nose of the football. Yep. As you could see, as we zoomed in on WMIXSports.com, they did have the first down. So they'll convert it on their first fourth down of the night, one for one. And the Terriers' drive will continue as they have first and 10 from the 19-yard line in Mount Vernon, or excuse me, the 17-yard line. 8.03 left to go here in the first quarter. So still early as the Terriers are threatening to tie. And they're going to continue with this offense. It's been very effective. Double tight will go Carbondale as they have been most of the night. Quarterback Whitfield working out of the shotgun. His back to the side is number 44, Damon Slaughter. He had a big run a moment ago. And this is going to be a handoff up the gut for Slaughter. And he's going to be brought down shy of the 15 and about the 16. It'll be a gain of about one for Slaughter. And it'll be second down and about eight and a half for the Terriers. This is a ground and pound. This is Mount Vernon. Here's some of your own medicine. Just pound the football right up the middle where, where we're going. We're going in the one or the two hole. And the A-gaps of the defense, and you're going to take it. We're going to see if you can stop us. And every once in a while when you start gathering in there, they're going to run outside one way or another, kind of mess you up. With five Jefferson County branches and responsive quality service for all of your accounts, Committee First Bank would like to be the first to say, welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, they are the official voice of high school sports here on WMIX. On second down, the Terriers with the football nears. Near hash spot, the quarterback Whitfield going to keep it himself. Found a nice little seam there. The Rams linebackers quick to close up the gap. And now a wall of Rams in to make the tackle at about the 14-yard line as Carbondale continues to threaten. We'll drop below the seven-minute mark here in the first quarter. 7-0, Rams on top. So glad you could join us here on AM 940. Video at WMIXSports.com. So it'll be third down for the Terriers. Gain of a little bit more than what I would have thought. But it'll be third and about six for Carbondale. Another third down. They've been able to convert thus far here on this drive. And you have a feeling the Rams would feel a little better if they could get fourth down coming with not quite a yard to go like last time. Empty backfield out of shotgun for the quarterback. In motion is Owsley, and this is going to be a QB keeper. Finds some running room as on his feet is Whitfield, and he will break into the end zone. He was scathed a little bit as he broke a couple of tackles. Went left between the hashes, hit pay dirt, and it's 7-6. to six. The direct snap, that was almost single wing-esque. Not a lot of the motion that goes with it, and he was able to take the direct snap, and he goes in for the score, does Mr. Whitfield, and now we're almost tied up. See that was a nice drive by Carbondale. That was a great drive by the Terriers. Ate some clock, got the touchdown. Now the left-footed Stucky on for the point after to try a tie at 7. Here it comes. It is straight up. It is... Straight down the middle, it splits the uprights. We're tied at seven with less than eight minutes to play here in this opening quarter. Not a bad drive for Carbondale. And very good that both, both teams 
to start out like this. Good for Carbondale to come back and get that touchdown very quickly. Scoreboard updates coming your way tonight. It'll be presented by Bird Watts and Drug. Join them tomorrow as they celebrate 40 years of serving you. It's a special anniversary celebration at 12th and Main. That's tomorrow, 10 to 2. They'll have bounce houses, face painting, games, raffles, fun. They'll also have food and dipping dots. You'll want to join them tomorrow. WMIX will be broadcasting live from 10 to noon. And Brittany Newman will also have, I believe, some Eric Church tickets to give away as he is in... He's in St. Louis. Well, he was already there. He's going... Was. This is in Evansville. Oh, well, that's a nice in little November. venue they have over there. Yeah, they call it the Ford Center, I believe. So the Rams will get another chance. They've had one play from scrimmage. It ended up in a 53-yard touchdown scamper by Run DMG. That's DeMontez Miller-Gray. He's been your player of the game a few times. View past players of the game at WMIXSports.com. They're presented by Tony Wilch, your State Farm agent. He would love to help your family with all of your insurance needs. Give him a call. Stop by the office or log on to TonyWilch.com. You can even try to find the white State Farm chief around town. Tony would love to help your family with all of their insurance needs. The Rams get the football back. Some sort of penalty there that was obviously assessed on the kickoff. As well, that kicking off from the 45. That's a unsportsmanlike conduct. Somebody did not wish somebody a happy homecoming from <laughs> Carbondale, and thus was flagged. See Rhubarb and fertilizer also <laughs> served during that penalty. I have a feeling it's suck. He's going to plant this one in the end zone if he were to choose, and he's going to go on the ground and go to DeMontez with a great about the four. He's going to try to go right up the middle, has some running room as he gets to about the 25, ran into a wall of his own minute about the 30. He'll be brought down, but all things considered, that'll be a net kickoff of about 15 yards for the Terriers. Okay, you got a left-footed kicker. You can use the draw. Don't kick it on the ground. Mount Vernon with the wind elects to kick it short. I'm confused. I know, right? You know, a right-footed kicker would have a difficult time tonight trying to hit his draw into the wind. He'd almost play a power fade. Left-footed kicker could hit that draw and really pin Mount Vernon back. But neither team elects to use the wind to their advantage. What do I know? Sometimes we know nothing, but we do know you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and find us on Facebook, WMIX Sports, in all locations. Tied at 7 here in the first quarter, 6.15 to play. Rands with the football, first and 10 on their own 30 ball, spotted on the near hash. Reeves, the quarterback under center, split left and right, a man in the right slot. Pitch is going to go to the right side, Miller Gray. Worked last time, why not now? He's out to the right, breaks a tackle, dives forward to about the 34. So it'll be a gain of about 4 to bring up 2nd and 6, and I think that's a celebration for the Terriers, knowing that they kept him from another 50-plus yard TD as they celebrate the tackle. I, you're Carbondale, you're 0-5, and Mount Vernon marches on one play, scores from 53 yards out. A lot of teams would have deflated then. Said time for homecoming festivities. They didn't. They came down and scored. They're into this game. They are ready. Waith right, Tyus left are your receivers for – Dylan Reeves in the mound for the Rams. Quarterback under center. Hester, the fullback in motion. A couple of guys jumped as Heiner's going to get the inside handoff. No, it's going to go to the right side. Quarterback keeper for Dylan. My apologies. Pass midfield. Pass the 45. Down at about the 40. Outside the hash. And what a run by Dylan Reeves. I think I was shocked by game. what should have been a false start. Uh, that's or a, well, illegal yeah. Or motion. There, was two Mount, there were two Mount Vernon Rams that kept moving around, moving around. And they were not called, and Reeves goes right side, runs the fake very well. Add did the running back, and all of a sudden, Mount Vernon in Carbondale territory once again. Reeves actually had a team high 95 rushing yards last week, for, I believe three scores against Marion. Split left and right for the senior quarterback, Miller Gray, Heiner, and Hester are your backs in the backfield. Miller Gray is going to be in motion inside handoff this time for real to Heiner. Right up the gut, off tackle, and he'll lean forward for a couple of yards on the play. Going to be a gain of about three as he gets to the curb, nil 38. 5 2 to play here in the first quarter. Tied between the Rams and Car Carterville. Carbondale. Past Carterville on the way, though. One of those nights. Cold night. Sparse crowd on both sides. Cardinals playing right now. Cold weather. You're going to see a lot of people maybe stay at home, watch us, and watch the Cardinals. Reeves, the QB, is still under center here between the hashes on the spot in Carbondale territory from the 38. Hester in motion, double handoff. It's going to come to the near side. Miller Gray is going to have to escape a tackle. Now running back to the right side. Gets a nice block for the quarterback, Reeves. He's still at the 45, trying to get to the least line. Scrooge breaks free. at the 35. 30 leads forward for a first down out of bounds. How about that? Wow. I bet the best part was watching Dylan, uh, Dylan Reeves line up because 
Well, we'll say this. Dylan Lee Reese threw a block that Clayton's never done. But <laughs> Dylan right there threw a great block to spring Miller Gray for that 10 yards going back the other way. And there is Clayton Reeves, your shout-out for the night. As with 4.23 left to go in the opening quarter, still tied at 7th. The Rams threatening now as they're inside the Carbondale 30 at the 29. It'll be Tyus split left, split right Derek Waith. Right back will be Miller Gray. Left back is Hester. Tailback this time, Andrew Heiner. The quarterback Reeves under the center. Heitmeyer in motion. It's Hester. It's going to be Reeves on a fake again. Finds some running room as he gets inside the 20. Still on his feet at about the 15 where it looks like he is brought down. It'll be about a 14-yard gain for the QB. It'll be first and 10 for the Rams with 4.04 to go here. So Rams moving the ball with relative ease. You get a sense of urgency out of Mount Vernon. Maybe we haven't seen the first five weeks. And this Rams team obviously has an edge tonight running the football with as much energy as we've seen all year. And the offensive line doing a fantastic job moving the people around there in the black shirts. It'll be another first and ten, this time for the Carbondale 15. 3.52 left in the opening quarter. Video is powered by Red Lake College. They can save you thousands on your collegiate education. Find out how and apply online at rlc.edu. Far hash spot, right to left go the Rams. Miller Gray in motion, inside handoff to Heiner. He'll run off tackle, found a nice gap as he bulldozes away inside the ten, inside the five. He's going to be at about the two or the three. It'll be a gain of about 12 or 13 for Andrew Heiner, number 33. And this will be first and goal for the Rams. Put those... Chains on the ground. You don't need them. Yeah, that was that was some running. And this is a Mount Vernon team that looks like they have an edge about them they haven't had all year. So with 3:25 to play in the first quarter, Rams in danger of scoring again on their second consecutive drive, tied at seven here, looking to make it a 13 to seven lead with the quarterback Dylan Reeves under center. Glad to have you on WMIX. Watch it online at WMIXSports.com. Pitch to the right side, Miller Gray. He's gonna find some nice blocks and route to an easy score. Three yard scamper for DMG. And he has his second TD of the night. Yeah, and now back again. <laughs> and tell you what, this Mount Vernon team looks pretty good. Now the defense needs to step up. The offense looks good. Defense time to step up and do their thing. And three touchdowns again in the first quarter. Defense not showing up here for either team. Rams seem to like Frank Flyer Field here tonight as McGowan's on for his second PAT of the night. He's hitting them at about a 50% clip this year. Here comes a snap. Ooh, almost got in there for the block, but he splits the uprights here and it's 14-7. Mount Vernon doubling up Carbondale. Well, it's a great start. Absolutely great start here for Mount Vernon, and now the defense needs to step up. Always bank on your hometown team. Community First Bank, home of the one account. It's free checking and high-yield interest. One means more. Member FDIC. I think you'll take that. 56 yards combined on the two touchdown runs by DeMontez Miller-Gray, making a case to be your State Farm player of the game tonight. I could be totally wrong. Kick this thing deep and don't ask questions. Don't ask, just I do. I mean, use the wind to your advantage while you have it. Don't squib it. But, you know, I'm, that's just my opinion. Don't. So it'll be Dalton McGowan on to kick, giving Carbondale their second offensive possession of the night. They will send number two, James Owsley, to return. He will be the deep man. Looks like also going to go with number 13, Hakeem Nelson, to return here for the Terriers. McGowan is on for the kickoff for a second time tonight. Dylan Reeves had typically handled those in the past. They're going to let McGowan, it looks like, handle most of the kicking duties here. Maybe the rest of the way. We'll see what happens. Here comes the kickoff, and this is going to be a little bit deeper at about the 15. Takes a bounce to about the 12. Nelson will pick it up. He's going to be given chase. Some arm tackles there for the Rams. Nelson's going to get some running room. He gets to the 30. Still trying to breathe at about the 35. He'll be brought down finally. Looks like a tackle for the Rams there by, I thought Brandon Rutherford had the tackle. So that will bring a nice field position for Carbondale on what looked like it was going to be stopped at about the 15. But they will have it at about the 37-yard line where the Terriers will have it. With 2.59 left to go on the first, Rams on top 14-7. Week 3 and Week 9 opponents for the Rams losing playoff points and week one opponent also losing. Taylorville, Triad, and Mount Carmel all currently trailing in their games as Taylorville losing to our friends from Effingham. Effingham's trying to put it back together this year. Coach McDonald in his final year there leading the Flaming Hearts. Interesting to see. Quarterback, of course, Calvin Whitfield. Everybody tied on that line. Rams are going to stack the box. Whitfield will it be another direct snap at a 13-yard touchdown last time. No, I'm sorry, he was under center. It's looked like we filled it. He's going to fumble the football. Tyus has it. Tyus is about the five. 
Touchdown as Xavier Tyus picked up a Lewis football and runs it back for six. Well, that's nice. Hello. There's your defense. You were saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think as unsuspecting as that was, it had looked like Whitfield was actually not under center that time. But on the handoff, they have some issues, and it's going to be another point after attempt coming for the Rams here with plenty of time to play. By comparison, 250 left in the first quarter. Looked very much like that was a quarterback center exchange issue. And it turned into points. And Tyus was in the right place at the right time. Touchdown Tyus is what it is. And looking to make it 21 7 is McGowan. And he is 3 for 3 as he splits the uprights. So 21 7, the Rams on top. Five Jefferson County branches. That's where you'll find with Community First Bank of the Heartland. Always bank on that hometown team. Community First Bank welcomes you back to personal banking. Member FDIC. Find us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. A nice sunset picture on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And some nice offense and defensive offense for the Mountford and Rams here tonight. Well, you got the stop, and then on top of that, you got the turnover. I mean, that's good stuff and a touchdown, and it's that's that's what you got to have here. We're going to test the upper body strength of the cheerleaders as they have to do their push-ups on every score. So now the Rams will kick off again. It'll be Dalton McGowan on to kick. He's 3 of 3 tonight for PATs. 21-7, Rams on top. 2.50 left to play here in the first quarter. Let's see what the Terriers can do now. Owsley and Nelson. Back to return as this is going to be a kick. Bounces about the 15, picked up by Nelson, maybe at about the 10. Nice, gets a nice block, and now trying to run back. He's still about the 5, not much. He's running east-west and finally brought down by Gage Burrows at about the 15-yard line. So that's going to be a net gain of nothing on the kickoff return by the Terriers. They'll have it back deep, first and 10 with 2.42 left. Well, and that, of course, Mount, this is where Mount Vernon's got to use that win as long as they can here in this first quarter. So first and ten for the Terriers. Clock is somewhere around the 250 mark. First and ten from their own 15. Carbondale out on the field right now. Ball spot on the near hash. That's pretty well all I can tell you. And we're going to have a flag. Delay a game. Mount Vernon. Flag was dropped, but Mount Vernon called timeout. It's hard to defend people when you have 12 guys. Yeah, that, that, well, it's not hard if you got 12. I thought it was 10, but looking it was 12. 21-7 Rams on top. Waiting moments of this first quarter. What a first quarter I think it has been for the Rams. Two touchdowns on the ground, one off a of fumble recovery. I think you'll take that every time, especially if you can keep it going. Well, in the if, you can get a, if you can get a turnover... That's that's money in the bank. Then you get a touchdown on that turnover. That makes it a little bit better as the other South 7 scores into one. Cahokia leads uh, Centralia 8-7. Marion and Altoff are scoreless at the end of one. Carmi over Hamco 14-zip end of one. El Dorado and Fairfield that tied at eight early in the first. Pinckneyville leads AJ on the road 7-zip. Carterville on the road at Nashville leads 14-8. Ducoin over Sparta 6-zip early. At the end of one, Benton and Harrisburg are scoreless. Heron over Massac, 14-7 in the first, and Murphy over Frankfurt, 14-zip. That is in the first. Carbondale with the football, first and 10 from their own 15-yard line. Quarterback will take the direct snap. Now he's looking downfield and almost does. Nope, ruled incomplete. That was a nice dive and a nice effort by number 33, Sam Bruno. He did, and there's a flag down to play. He threw that. And I don't know how you throw a football. you got to kind of stay over the top and kind of maybe at the 11 o'clock hour, if you know what I mean. He kind of threw that one. Looked like he was trying to throw at 9. Very submarine-like. <laughs> For throwing a football? Yeah. You ever try to throw a football submarine? No. Don't work. No, he's that's why I've it. never done it. It's kind of like his, he's, he's leading with his right front of his yeah. chest and leading that arm behind and trying to come through. We deserve to be on TV right now because this would be classic on, well, on would camera. Be. Uh oh, look who's here. We get him I two do. weeks in a row. Hopefully better luck this week with two thirty eight left to go in the first. Twenty one seven. Flag on the field and this one is 
for not? What's going on? Well, it's a flag on Mount Vernon. First of all, there's no, there was no play. The fact that you, you shouldn't have to look around to see where you were to come back. Just mark off 10 yards. You know where you were. Where that flag That's okay. is. That's another 10 for Mount Vernon. One thing about it, the Rams have been penalized as if there's no tomorrow. Be first and ten for Carbondale from their own 30-yard line. 2.38 left. It'll be on the near hash. Quarterback Whitfield out of the shotgun. Single back set. Rams have stacked the box. A little bit of play action. Nope, he's going to keep it himself. Keeps it on the ground. Does Whitfield trying to break to the left sideline. As Michael Johnson will give chase. Ultimately trips him up. We'll see where they give credit on the spot. Going to be a gain of at least five on the ground toward that far sideline. There, go ahead and give him six. It'll be second and four now for Carbondale as we... Are about the 36-yard line as we sit. Community First Bank of the Heartland is the official voice of high school sports here on WMIX. 2-10 left here in the opening quarter. Rams up a pair of touchdowns. Comfortable lead at this point, though you need to get another defensive stop here, I think, if you can, to really set the tone in this opening quarter. 2.06 left. Mm. Still nobody split off for these Terriers. Whitfield all by himself in the backfield. And he is going to drop back to pass. It's a two-step drop downfield. It's going to be un well underthrown. That's going to be an incomplete pass. Great effort, great fake there by Jylan Rush to try to feign the interception. But it's going to fall for an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock with 146, and it'll bring up third down and about four for the Terriers. Well, Carbondale, we talked to their announcers before this one started, and we were told they'll throw it about 15, 20 times a game. Right now have not completed a pass in four attempts. So this Carbondale team kind of on their M.O. right now in a long first quarter. Well, as far as completion percentage is concerned, Whitfield's about 39% for the season. Ooh, and he, folks, he did that without a calculator or pencil. <laughs> One forty-six left to go here in the opening quarter. Now wide to the right for the Terriers. That is going to be James Owsley, and there's going to be a flag on this play. You know what really bothers me when a referee throws a flag and he acts like it's such a chore to throw the flag and walk over and tell what's going on? Dead ball foul. Hell, legal formation. That's five yards on Carbondale. So that'll push the Terriers back. And third and f an attractive four is going to become third and nine now for the Terriers. First quarter action from Frank Blyer Field in the WIX Sports Mobile Studios. 21-7. Mount Vernon on top of Carbondale. Rams return home to J.D. Shields Memorial Stadium. Next week will be on 94.1 FM and AM 940 as well as provide video at WMIXSports.com. That'll be the case for at least the next two weeks. Week 9 against Mount Carmel is going to depend on what the Cardinals do, whether or not they get to the World Series. Got to get past the Dodgers and the NLDS first. I know that. As this is going to be Whitfield taking it himself, feigned the handoff, and Heiner and company are going to be in for the tackle as this isn't going to get anywhere, and it's going to be fourth and long for Carbondale. As I thought I saw Heiner, I even thought I saw Drew Hester lead the way. That's Mount Vernon defense playing a little bit better and have definitely used the wind to their back as an opportunity as we go under a minute. This first quarter will take over 30 minutes. And what has been a four-touchdown first quarter so far. Now Carbondale will punt into the wind, so Mount Vernon will get to use that wind one more time and should get out of here with some very good field position to start in this first and start the second quarter. There's at one time looked like they're going to punt. The Rams returners will come up. Tyus, of course, the punt returner. Rams have only gotten a return three punts this season. Tyus will have to go way back. He's going to call for the fair catch, and he'll fall on it. Probably should just let it go at that point, knowing his footing wasn't going to be the best. But he's able to come up with it. It'll be first and ten for the Rams. It'll be at their own 38-yard line. Make that 34-yard line. You all right over there? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Your secondary team do something great? Oh, yeah, they did. Rams, or the Rams. Cardinals just have the wrong Ellis. Yeah, on the FM side, Dodgers down. Dodgers up 6-1. to one. And what has been a very interesting game with some spirits between the two teams early on. Is that 2012 NLDS Game 5 Adam Wainwright showing up tonight? Uh, I don't know. Four innings pitch. So that means the next time he pitches, he's going to be lights out. Eek. Reeves, the quarterback under Siller, center, Miller Gray's in motion. This is going to be a pitch off of the fake to the right side for Miller Gray. Looking to get first down yardage on that outside as he gets to about the 45. He'll have that first down. It'll be first and 10 for the Rams. They lead 21-7 with 26.3 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Apologies for not saying the clock very much. Unable to see it without actually opening a window and leaning out to the point of almost falling out, out of the window. And that would not be good. 
So at the 49-yard line, ball spotted on the far hash from our perspective. Right to left, still go to the Rams for another 26 football seconds. Split to the left side, it'll be Tyus on the right way. Your backs are Hester, Heiner, and Miller Gray. Two of the three on the right side. Hester will be the tailback here on the left. Quarterback Dylan Reeves is under center. Here on the play, he's going to keep it himself. Rolls into the gap on the right side. He has first down yardage brought down inside the 40 to about the 36. That'll be a gain of about 12 with 20.2 seconds left. The clock will stop as the chains move again. Impressive. Impressive. This Carbondale team, we were told before the game, struggles to stop the run. And right now, that's kind of coming out to play here. So now with 18 seconds, the Clark clock will start as this first quarter looks to be expiring here in just a matter of moments. Corvier Meredith will be split out to the left side for the Rams. Give him a little bit of a new look here. Reeves, the quarterback, will be under center. Two seconds left in the quarter, and Dylan does not appear to be giving any kind of snap count. And that is how your first quarter will end. After one, the Mountford and Rams 21, the Carbondale Terrier 7. This is Mountford and Rams football presented by Community First Bank. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. Now is a great time to move your account to Community First Bank. With our new one account offering the highest interest rate in the market, free checking, and CD specials delivered by people you know and trust, why would you not bank with a market leader in Jefferson County? We offer five locations with seven ATMs and have been serving the Jefferson County market since 1906. Stop in and see why our bank is the fastest growing bank in Jefferson County. Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. HealthMart Pharmacies are locally owned pharmacies, and the pharmacists at Bird Watson Drugs know there's nothing more important than your family's well-being. I'm Melinda Breeze, and flu season is just around the corner. Feel confident knowing that you and your family are well protected. I invite you to stop by our store for this year's flu shot. Your flu shot can be easily billed to your insurance or purchased by cash or credit card. Come in to 12th and Main or 34th and Broadway and get the care you deserve. Bird Watson Drugs caring for you and about you. Find exclusive audio on SoundCloud. This is Rams football from WMIX Sports. Welcome you back on AM 940 and worldwide with video at WMIXSports.com. Second quarter action from Frank, Frank Blyer Field here in Carbondale. The Rams lead 21-7, to looking for their first conference win and looking for win number two overall. Can Dylan Reeves and the Rams hang on? They look impressive so far on the ground. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside. Jeff Crow has the camera. Hunter Schrader has the controls back to the studio. Reeves, the quarterback, will be under center. Miller Gray this time will be your tailback. Your wingbacks are Heiner and Hester. Pitch is going to go left side. Miller Gray has been impressive on the ground as he's looking to break toward that sideline. Finally has a wall of tacklers, but able to slip in between that wall and get to about the 30. We'll see where they're going to give the spot, maybe about the 29. It's not quite going to be that 30-yard line. As we have about 11.45 left to go in this first quarter. Second quarter, rather, 21-7 Rams on top. It'll be second down at about six or four. Got my numbers reversed there. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Happens. Mount Carmel down 34 nothing. Yikes. That's not good for them. No. Or even Mount Vernon, maybe. Waith split to the right side. Looks like Ty is still the man out to the left. Quarterback Reeves working from under center. It's going to be a fake handoff this time. He will roll, and he has some running room as he gets inside the 20-15. Looking toward the 10 as he's finally brought down at about the 11 or 12. No doubt about a first down. That's going to be a nice little gain there. Maybe about 20 yards, depending upon the spot, for Dylan Reeves. Reeves had nearly 100 yards last week, and that's going to be about a 19-yard gain. Yeah, another first down, and Mount Vernon continues to march on this Terriers defense, little to no resistance. We'll drop below the 11-minute mark here this second quarter. 21-7, Rams rolling here, looking to change that and take a big lead. Reeves getting it done on the ground. Miller Gray has gotten it done on the ground. Heiner's found some nice running room as the quarterback Reeves will be under center. Wait split to the right. Did they get the Terriers to jump? No whistles, so apparently not, as Reeves is going to keep it himself. Pull forward. Now he's going to break past the line, lean in for a touchdown as he... We'll get into the end zone, and that is going to be about a 12-yard touchdown run for Dylan Reeves, who now has five over the last two weeks. 12-yard run. And now Mount Vernon with a major lead. And now kind of feeling good about themselves here in this first half. I think you have to feel pretty exquisite at this point. Used the wind to their advantage exquisitely in this first half as far as how they were able to 
take care of business with the win, take the advantage, and do what they had to do. Kick is up. Snap was actually pretty good this time. And there you go. Four of four this week. It's Dalton McGowan on the PAT, and he came in. He was 7 of 13 for 53.8 percent. His season-long percentage is going to go up this week as he's now 4 of 4. 28-7 to score. Rams up three touchdowns. you got to like that. Yep, up three touchdowns. Going to need some help here, Chris. <laughs> the non-conference opponents for the Rams kind of struggling here. Taylorville losing week one. Charleston's losing as well. Week three, Triad losing. And week nine, Mount Carmel losing. And you're only going to get two playoff, three playoff points if you all the conference games play out well, if you win. And that's the thing about the week three opponent, Triad losing to Mascuda. That's kind of a, I don't want to say a concern necessarily. It is more so for Triad, but, huh. Yeah. I figured Triad would be a heavy favorite in that one. Oh, Fouts Christian Church in Cravat. Nice. Is feeding Coach McKee and the SVWW Red Devils. So says at J. Bo Wilson. Give him a little shout out. You never know where you're going to run into no. J. Bo. Oh, he was happy. Right now. He was happy yesterday with Throwback Thursday with the <laughs> 94 Wayne City Indians High School Boys basketball team. There's a young J. Bo in that picture. This is going to be reeled in at about the 5 by James Owsley. Now at the 30 on the near side, trying to get to the sideline. Won't quite get there at the 31. Pulled down by, it looks like that is. Number six, Darius Johnson. I thought I also saw our Curry in the picture. And that, of course, throwback Thursday still up on Facebook.com slash Sports for everybody to see. We even stuck her on the old Instagram. Yeah. I saw how that turned out. Instagram, you can find us at WMIX Sports. Nice picture of the sunset on most of the social media tonight from us. Here, Frank Flyer Field and Carbondale. Second quarter action, 28-7. Rams on top, 10-34 left. Whitfield, the quarterback, out of the pistol. Thought he was going to hand off, throws a pass in the flat. This one's actually going to be complete, but it's not going to matter because Gage Burrows brings the receiver down at about the line of scrimmage. Might be a short gain as the intended target. Well, the completed pass, number 23, they were Tyler McCormick. That pass went about me to you, and this booth isn't very big as far as yardage is concerned. Darn near a lateral. Just a footstep ahead to Ooh. make it a forward pass. Marion's up 14-0 at Althoff. That's interesting. Kind of wondered about the Crusaders, just how good they were. That is very interesting. Well, that's one, if you're the Rams, you both totally believe you should have had. Whitfield out of the shotgun. This is going to be a handoff to Ousley as he's looking to find some running room. Bouncing off the, ta the would-be tacklers. Just bounced around in there. Went, finally went Frogger and got to about the 38. Not going to be a gain mm. of much. Might be a gain of about five to bring up third down and four with 9.39 left to go on this first half. Community First Bank of the Heartland is the official voice of Rams Athletics. Always bank in your hometown team. Community First Bank offering the one account. Free checking with high-yield interest. One means more at Com First. A problem with Frogger, though, with that much contact, I don't think he would have made it that far. You're absolutely right. You know. So we're going to have a timeout, I believe, here. Timeout for Carbondale. Clock will stop with 9.20 left in the first half. 28-7, Mount Vernon on top. They came up with a couple of defensive stops tonight that have led to points. That has been a difference thus far. Let's see. Medicine Shop brings you our timeouts tonight. You can find Dr. Eric Black and staff at 2339 Broadway at Mount Vernon. Also, TMS Mobility and Rehab for all of your standard and custom mobility needs. They will take care of you at the Medicine Shop. You never know what you're going to find on the Twitterverse. Yeah, but... Speaking of scores, at updates. Stu Coin over Sparta in the second, 14-6. Benton and Harrisburg still scoreless in the second. Heron over Massac into 128-14. Murphy leads Frankfurt into 121 nothing. Marion, as I said, up 14 nothing in the second quarter now. Carmi all over Hamilton County, 22 nothing in the second. And El Dorado at the train yard leads Fairfield 22-20. As we said, all four non-conference opponents for the Rams right now are losing at this stage of the early evening. Certainly not where you want to be on the losing side right now. No. So Altoff is marching now, knocking on the door in Marion territory. <laughs> Nashville up 16-14 second quarter on Carterville. Whitfield may have gotten the Rams to jump off sides, and that appears to be what has happened. That will give Coach Gray hair. Yeah, well. If he were to stop shaving. You know what? Speaking of that look, for those of you wondering, Coach Shaner, that's a first down Carbondale in the jump. That's the fifth penalty on Mount Vernon. Wearing the short sleeves and the shorts tonight. 
but has grown out the hair. For growing him out, that's like a tenth of an inch. You know, I was so bummed when I found out he could grow hair. He just shaves it because he can or wants to. has nothing to do with, like my case, of I would not have hair in a lot of places if I didn't bother to shave it. It's unfortunate. Quarterback Whitfield will be under center deep back in the backfield. His tailback's about the 45-yard line. It's going to be a QB keeper on first and 10. Still fighting for yards. Pushing what is that defense back. At some point, forward progress has to come in as it looks like finally down at about midfield. So that'll actually end up as about a gain of eight, bring up second and two, depending upon the spot. Nope, they're not giving them all that That credit. was a rugby scrum. A rugby scrum of epic proportions as the ball was pushed forward. So it'll be second and about four now for the Terriers as the clock is about the 849 mark. Watch us online at WMAXSports.com. Presented by Rin Lake College. Find them online at rlc.edu. See how you can save thousands. Whitfield in the backfield now to the shotgun as he is going to hand off to Slaughter. The fullback not going to get much on this. Found the wall. Pushed back. Might be a slight loss. Didn't get much there. And Mount Vernon's defense. You don't, if you're Mount Vernon, you should for sure, you know, I know you're up three scores on the road. you got to feel pretty good. You just don't want any letdowns at this point. You want to be able to get things going and get through and, and dominate this game. I don't think you want to let Carbondale back in, be down two scores or one score, and waste all that effort you did in the first quarter to get this big lead. As we're third down and about six, the Terriers will come to the line of scrimmage. The quarterback Whitfield out of the backfield. All tied on the line here for the Terriers. And now he's looking downfield to pass. This one's going to be tipped away by the linebacker, Hester. Mm -hmm. And now they'll bring up fourth down. We'll see what happens here with 7.51 to play in the first half. Still 28-7, Mount Vernon. Good thing the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, or that would have been pass interference as the Mount Vernon defender practically tackled the receiver for Carbondale in the middle. And because the ball was tipped, pass interference, of course, is denied. And then you can knock the guy everywhere. As Carbondale is going to punt, it'll be Tyus to return as he stands between the hashes at about the 23-yard line. This one's going to go way back, and hopefully, if you're the Rams, this one gets in the end zone as this one is finally going to – that one gets in. Yep. Barely got in, and the Rams will start first and ten. Even when you hit those Pro Vs with the wind, they don't stick very well. That ball rolled through the end zone. Effingham up 14-7 on Taylorville. Of course, that was week one Mount Vernon opponent. <laughs> So Mount Vernon right now in a little struggle to try to get some points as all three of their people, to our knowledge, are losing. Ouch. 7.41 to play here in the first half. Tony Wilcher, State Farm agent, sponsors our player of the game. State Farm player of the game. Find it at WMIXSports.com. We'll pick a new one. Here tonight, Reeves and the Rams have first and ten from their own 20 ball spotted between the hashes. 7.41 left in the half. Everybody tied except for the left side. Split Miller Gray is going to get the carry left side. Now he's going to try to run back to the right. He's going to have a significant loss. Instead of he tried to cut back to the near side like he did back in the first quarter on the first play from scrimmage that went 53 yards. And now he will take about a 15-yard loss. Oh, you know what they say. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. They weren't going to fall for that. Get the ball, take off, go the other way, reversal. There we go. That wasn't going to change. So now it's 7.09 to play here in the first half. Tony Wilt, by the way, would love to help your family with all their insurance needs. Find them on the web at TonyWilt.com. Stop in his office or look for the White State Farm Jeep around town. It'll be split. Waith off to the right, off to the left will be Xavier. Tyus Reeves is going to try to fake it, and he does on the handoff. Finds the running room, gets to the 10, about the 15. Trying to make it to the original line of scrimmage. Won't get there. About five yards short, but he does get to about the 12-yard line for a gain of seven. It'll be third and 14. It'll be nice if Mount Vernon could somehow get a first down here and run some more clock and let it go, you know, and run this half out and get out and shorten this game a little bit for Carbondale. Six twenty-five to play here in the first half. Mount Vernon 28, Carbondale 7. Third and 14 for the Rams. The ball spotted on the far hash here. A calm win, a brisk win here on a chilly October night. 
Just three days in, as this is going to be Reeves faking to Miller Gray. He's going to have to try to find somebody downfield. It'll be complete to Tyus. He was about the 35, 40. 45 breaks to midfield. He's at the 50, 45. Now cuts back at the 40, brought down from behind at about the 36-yard line. That'll be a nice gain 40. of about 50-ish. Yeah, about 50 is what <laughs> I was counting it as. And that was a pretty nice little catch. And Mount Vernon moving the chains again, trying to get another score. They said 44 on the PA. Their math's not very good. That's oh, well, we know, who it is. 50. we know who it is down there. We can heckle later. We're going to have to. Oh, yeah. Our man. Come on. Wow. Marrying up 21 nothing. That was J. Bo Wilson says, that was when I was young, 20 years, 2 inches, and 57 pounds ago. <laughs> Got to like that. <laughs> Benton and Harrisburg are scoreless at the half. Oh, my. Quarterback Reeves will be in there sooner here. 5.42 to play in the half. Rams looking for some more points. He's going to fake the handoff again, roll right up the middle down to about the 30-yard line. If they give him the full spot, it'll be about six-yard gain for Reeves. It'll bring up second and four as the Rams looking to move the change yet again. Community First Bank of the Heartland is the official voice of high school sports here on WMIX. One means more. It's free checking with high-yield interest. Just ask for one. Yeah. Like I said, Mount Vernon gets another score here before half. You get up 35-7, Carbondale might want to fold the tents and think about homecoming. I'm going to tell you right now, yeah, if this hangs me. on, I'm looking forward to Jared Shaner tomorrow. it would be fun. On the Saturday sports show. I look forward to it regardless. Mountain, Night Mountain doing breakfast pizza, timeout Rams. Show's booked. We're going a different way next tomorrow, but that happens. You act like that's a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. It's ooh, Nashville over at Carterville, 24-14. We're going a different route. Got a lot of sports going on right now. Of course, golf goes into postseason mode next week with regionals, and we're going to try to cover some of the local teams that have some conference championship hardware and also are going to have possible run in the postseason. A lot of good golf teams around the WMIX area. That there are. This time out presented by the Medicine Shop Pharmacy, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Also, TMS Mobility and Rehab. Glad to have Dr. Eric Black and his great staff on for another year of taking care of our timeouts. See what's happening here on the field. Right now it's 28-7. to Rams on top. It'll be second down and four coming out of the timeout huddle. The ball is on the Carbondale 30 with 5.02 to play in this second quarter. What a first half it has been for this Ram football team as they will return home for Cahokia. I believe that is Mount Vernon home coming next week. Next week. Senior night and pink out on October the 17th. Don't forget to get your WMIX Sports Pink Rally Towels at Winning Edge, 212 South 9th in Mount Vernon, or from Julie Hayes, the FBLA advisor on campus. You pink. Can. The pink towels are very sharp. They are. They're going to have pink t-shirts, pink hoodies. You can order those through Julie Hayes. Go to mvths.org for her contact information. See about getting a rally towel. Rally towels are a dollar donation, but all of the money goes to the Susan G. Coleman for the Cure Foundation. Great cause. Quarterback Reeves under center on first and 10 from the 30. Hester's going to get the carry. Finds some running room. Dives forward past the 25 to about the 23. It'll be a gain of about seven, and that will be first down for the Rams. Boy, it is uh, definitely a bash. Mount Vernon running power football. Too far to go to the chicken nugget capital, I guess. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> The one on the right in that conversation knows that's a hoodie. 4.44 to play here in the first <laughs> half. 28-7, your score split the right side away. Hester was in a slot. He's going to get a sweep carry to the right side. He's back at the 25, now at the 20. Looking to get to the 15. Won't get there. He'll get to about the 13. It'll be a gain. Hey, my eyesight's not very good. My perspective's even worse. That was not the 13. That was actually going to be about the 16. So a gain of four. I'm not holding my breath on that hoodie. Shaner took care of us this year. Oh, I'm yeah, wearing yeah. said hoodie tonight. I don't know right. where logo to. I'll tell you what though, to a game. The hoodie guy on the right, he did give us a pullover about three years ago. Oh yeah, remember one I night he walked up. So I now, so baseball, right. baseball, right. girls basketball, and football currently moving up the list. You're right. I forgot about that. Oh, I was in yeah. denial about my size. It's Fake handoff from Reeves. He's looking to roll to the left side. Not quite going to get to that outside sideline, but he was inside the original line of scrimmage. Push back. It'll be third down for the Rams. 3.47 to go in the first half. 28-7. The Rams still have three touchdowns. Totally Tylers. They drive the WIX Sports Mobile Studios. Check out their new remodeled locations just west of Interstates 57 and 64. 
find them online at tylertoyota.net and tylerscars.com. Glad to have them back aboard our Rams broadcast. Yeah. Got all kinds of guests on tomorrow. Talk different things. Talk all kinds of stuff. It'll be good on Saturday Sports Show. We Mount love Vernon it. here trying to make it a good first part of it. That they are. Third and five for Dylan Reeves in the mound for the Rams. Ball in the 17 far hash spot. They're going to go sweep to left side Miller Gray, and he's going to have to break a couple tackles if he wants a first down. Doesn't quite get there from our perspective, and this is going to be fourth and short for the Rams. We'll see what they elect to do here. At least, again, this is from our perspective. We're looking kind of offset, not as high as we normally would be. Still, we are out of the elements, and that's all that matters. The clock will run here. And not as close as I initially thought. Interesting. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski on WMIX Mount Vernon. A free service from Withers Broadcasting near the top of the 8 o'clock hour. Reeves under center on 4th and 2 from the 15. And he's going to plunge forward. Looks like he might have gotten first down yardage from here. And he will get a 3-yard gain for first down. 2.29 to play in the half. The clock will continue after the chains are set. It'll be first down for the Rams deep in the red zone now. Up 28-7. to seven. Rams are looking for 2-4 yeah. and four on the year if they can get this win here tonight. Best part is you run that clock down. Remember the fourth down, big pass play, about six to go, kind of extended this, and now look what happened. You still have the football. And now split to the right side wave. On the left, it's going to be Tyus. Tailback will be Andrew Heiner. The quarterback still Dylan Reeves under center with 2.09 to play in the half. Far hash spot. Fake handoff again. Nope. It's going to be pitched to the outside for Hester. He's going to try to break to the near corner of the end zone. Gets in. Hits the pylon. That'll be a 14-yard run for Hester. And the Rams take a 34-7 lead. Yep. And Mount Vernon is rolling with two minutes to go in the first half. And that is good time for the Rams. If you're tired of big corporate banking, you have a choice in Jefferson County. Community First Bank is at home and Dick signed a Woodlawn and two at Mount Vernon. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, 94.1 FM, AM 940, WMIXsports.com. that live next two weeks at least. McGowan's kick is up. It splits the uprights. He's 5 of 5 and it's 35-7. He's one point shy of Mason Crosby's effort last night for the Packers. Yeah. Keeping fantasy stats. It's all, it's all a pass chart last night that was Ooh. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, Eddie Lacy went off last night. Yeah. You know, Let's here's see. the thing about four games into a Thursday night NFL game every week. The team, the winning team is averaging 29-point victory, and three of the four teams uh, have won. Hester scored that one. Uh-huh. Trying to help our brethren down below us. He went to the right and snuck it in the near corner. Di dove and hit the pylon. 35-7 Rams on top. Carbondale will send Bercy back to return. Or, excuse me, Owsley back to return. Bercy's gone. Heard he graduated. DeMond Slaughter <laughs> is going to be the other returnee. Should have, anyway. Find my age is right. McGowan on for the kickoff. Two minutes left in the first half. Rams up four touchdowns. As this will be off to the far side. Picked up by Slaughter. He's going to muff it. It'll bounce all the way to about the 25. And that actually took a Carbondale bounce. Rams nowhere in the neighborhood just yet. And that'll be first and 10 for the Terriers. They'll have a far hash spot in their own territory. I'm going to say it about the 25-yard line. 157 left to go in this first half. Mount Vernon dominated here. Must be cold out there. It's hard to lock in on the duty. Duty? Yeah. Yeah, well. Have to close that pool down. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> baby Ruth. We were talking about Caddyshack today at work. Were you really? Duty! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we were talking about, hey, give me something for the effort. Ah, you'll have nothing and to like it. Was, it. Well, how come it always comes back to golf for you? I said, I don't know. It's because that's the way it is. Natural. Yeah. Now the shotgun Whitfield in motion. It's going to be Owsley to the right side. Rams trying to time it. And it's going to be a pass over the top. It's going to be complete. Only the second pass completed tonight for the Terriers. As the target mm -hmm. and the completion is to Nick Whitbeck. That was a, friendly, be a game of 11. friendly little spot there. That was just a jump up and soft toss. That's what that was. jump pass. Made famous by Tim Tebow to, <laughs> well, Aaron Hernandez. 
Rans fans, if you haven't found the time to stop by the new Winning Edge at 212 South 9th, you can now buy your gear online. Log on to store.winningedgeusa.com. That's store.winningedgeusa.com. Snap to the quarterback. Whitfield's going to have some running room, but he's tripped up as he gets to about the 40 on the dive. Thought I saw, I thought that was Miller Gray that might have tripped him up. Uh, you know what the problem with that is? What's that? Well, when you trip up and then it won't your own feet do it, that's a problem. I got gotcha. you. So a four-touchdown lead for the Rams, 35-7 with a minute 29 to play here in the first half. Scoreboard updates all night long presented by Bird Watson Drug, dedicated to making sure you and your family stay healthy. Stop by 12th and Main or 34th and Broadway for your flu shot this year. All the things going around, you might need that flu shot. A lot of people I know are getting that. All kinds of stuff going around right now. Some good, some bad. Yeah. Actually, none of it, I guess, is really that well, good. None of it's really good. But there's some good news, I'm sure, floating around, like the Pink Out Night to raise money for Susan G. Komen for the Cure. You can find out more information on that on the front page of nbths.org. You can find our rally towels at Winning Edge, 212 South 9th, also at the high school. Find Julie Hayes' contact information on there, nbths.org. The towels are just a dollar. They're handsome. QND, which is Quincy Notre Dame, leads Breeze Modern Day at home 14-0. So says our friend from Quincy. Rams trying to continue spoiling Carbondale's homecoming here. Second and five for the Terriers in their own territory. Looking for a quick pass. Flushed out of the pocket is the quarterback Whitfield. Brought down at the 30. And it looks like mm. in on the play are Bowers, Green, and Bowers is celebrating, I think, with the tackler who I thought was Darius yep. Johnson, but I never saw the number. Yep, you had it correct. And another timeout. Timeout Mount Vernon. They're going to try to get another score here. This timeout is presented by the Medicine Shop Pharmacy, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon, and also TMS Mobility and Rehab, both owned and operated by Dr. Eric Black and his great staff. Thank them for being a part of our Rams and Lady Rams broadcast for yet another season, or I should say series of seasons. Football, volleyball, basketball, both boys and girls, and baseball and softball, all coming your way from the WMIX Sports coverage area thing. Ran out of words. Yeah. Happens. Your carb note, what do you do here? Maybe to get some points before the half. Right now you're backed up deep in your own territory, well, third and about 15. The third. third and 15, I think if you're a Carbondale, obviously if you can't get a first down here, you want to punt that ball as deep as you can, make Mount Vernon be back in their own territory. Maybe the Rams will shut her down. Of course, Carbondale gets the ball to start the second half. And I think you have to kind of tuck tail, go in, and, and make adjustments at this point if you are the Terrier. That's what be the, would be the plan if I were to do it. Effingham leads Taylorville 21-7 at the half. So that continues a bad night of non-conference games for the Rams. Eek. Yeah, you got Jasper all over Mount Carmel. 34-0. Effingham's up two touchdowns on Taylorville, and Mas Mascuda's blowing out Triad 27-0. Now a deep heave down the field to the right side, underthrown. Tyus almost came yeah. up with a pick on the run, William A. style, but it's going to fall incomplete. It'll be fourth and 15. That heave was intended, I believe, for McCormick. And it fell incomplete at about the Mount Vernon 40. So 105 left to go in the first half. It'll be fourth and 15 from the Carbondale 30. We'll see if they heave it downfield again. It's a long way uh, down there, but that wind will help out, give you extra club, less club to worry about. Murphy all over Frankfurt, 42-6. Redbirds coming off a big win last week at Bitten, breaking their 18-game losing streak. So now on 4th and 15, Terriers look as if they're going to punt at this point. They get the kickoff almost blocked. <laughs> Less than a minute to go. The Rams are going to get it back, and it'll bounce around about the Ram 40. 41 is where they're going to have it first and 10. Very curious to see how Mount Vernon comes out. They elect to down it, go into half of the lead, going into the wind, or if they do try to do something constructive here. It was a very impressive first half from your Mount Vernon Rams. We'll have your second chance auto halftime show coming up. Don't forget Rams Athletics presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. See what the Rams can do here with 56.5 seconds left. First and 10 between the hashes from their own 41-yard line. Quarterback Reeves will be under center. Split to the left and to the right. Same wing back set here for Jared Shaner's Mount Vernon team. Quick pass. Oh, incomplete. That one. 
was at the fingertips after a nice leap by Tyus. It'll stop the clock, second and 10, 52.5 seconds he left. He jumped in the air, caught the ball as the ball was going back, and he couldn't grab it, and the ball hit off his hands. It ricocheted back forward. Luckily, that ball was not picked off on the tip on a half that has taken over an hour. It's been a long first half. At least it feels that way. Second and 10 for the Rams, still between the hashes. Waith will go to the right, Tyus to the left. Hester, Heiner, Miller, Gray are your backs. Quarterback Reeves under center. Carbdale, eight in the box here on this play. It's going to be a handoff to Heiner. Heiner still found running room with a stacked box. He'll get to the 45, gain of four. It'll be third and six. 45 seconds to go in the first half. Second chance out of halftime. Show sure will be coming your way. Whether buy here, pay here, dealer in the area can save you hundreds, even thousands on the total cost of your vehicle. Second Chance Auto can stop by their impressive lot on Route 142 East. In Mount Vernon, 30 seconds left. It's going to be Reeves on the fake handoff. Looks like he will get first down yardage as he went off tackle. Left side past the hash, past midfield to about the 49. But where I stand, oh, looks like it could be a first that down. That old midline option for Mount Vernon. He put it in the gut of the running back, and the quarterback reads the end. Mount Vernon going quickly here. They got the first down, stop the clock. They can't start the clock, though, till the chains are there. So first and 10 into Carbondale territory on the 49-yard line. Far hash spot for the quarterback, Reeves. Split left and right here for this Ram offensive set. Looking for the quick pass down the left side. It'll be a fade route. Ty is going to have to catch up with the throw. Overthrown by about 10 yards to the 20. It'll stop the clock, second and 10 with 11.9 seconds left. Rams 35, Carbondale 7. Here late in the second quarter. Ball still on the 49-yard line for the Rams. Talking it over now with 11.9 ticks left. 17 on the play clock. Second and 10. Ball on the Mount Vernon 49. Far hash spot. Left to right go to the Rams here late in the second quarter. Reason or center Miller Gray's in motion. Reeves going to roll to the right side, looking downfield, and he's going to put it to the ground. He's at the 45-40, 35-30, out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 31. 4.1 seconds left as this is going to be a gain of about 18. First and 10 for the Rams as Reeves continues to get it done on the ground. Yeah, nice to see. Mount Vernon with 4.1 will have to heave ho one here or maybe a hook and ladder, maybe a double pass. And going to the locker room, dominating with a four-touchdown lead. That feels pretty good. Have to feel amazing. 35-7 the score. Rams on top of the Terriers. And, uh, fourth down stop away from still having a shutout. Always like the center who bolts out of the huddle early. Goes to the football. Mark Stepnowski style. Reeves. Got a backward pass to Miller Gray. Somehow he'll come up with it off of the ground, off of the bounce. Now off the far side, looking to bulldoze ahead. And loses his footing inside the 10. And the first half will come to an end. So that's going to be a gain of about 20. So it is halftime here from Carbondale. The Mount for the Rams 35, the Carbondale Terriers 7. We'll take a break, come back with your second chance auto halftime show. This is Rams football from WIX Sports. More Americans are on a move today than ever before. One of the most popular modes of transportation is the motorcycle. Motorcycles take us to our jobs, school, to the beach, and all around the country. If you're a bike rider, your Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crownview in Mount Vernon, wants to make sure you have the best insurance protection while you're riding. Ask about the money-saving auto cycle discount and the experienced driver discount, too. Call Page Insurance at 2427-1000 today about motorcycle insurance from Pekin Insurance. At Banfera, we understand that banking is a relationship. It's a friendly face that knows your name, understands your needs, supports your goals. Banfera offers a complete range of personal and business banking products with competitive rates and loans that range from small projects to multi-million dollar opportunities. We offer conveniences such as online banking, mobile banking, and direct deposit. For a strong community bank with exceptional customer service, Banfera is a smart choice for your banking needs. Banfera Bank, a proud supporter of Southern Illinois High School sports. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. I have been suffering with carpal tunnel for years coping with the symptoms of tingling of my fingers and gradually getting worse to the total numbness of my hands. 
My fingers were so numb and swollen, I couldn't even bend them. It was waking me up several times at night, and I was exhausted all day. If this sounds familiar, you may be suffering from a condition called carpal tunnel syndrome. Dr. Ahn at the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois specializes in treatment of the hand and wrist and treats carpal tunnel as well as treatment of the shoulder and elbow. He performs a minimally invasive procedure on patients who fail to respond to non-surgical methods of treatment. Endoscopic carpal tunnel relief is a surgical treatment used to minimize pain, reduce scarring, reduce therapy, and allows patients to resume normal activities in a short period of time. Endoscopic surgery is a highly effective treatment and has been used for more than 20 years. For an appointment, please call Dr. Ahn at the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois at 242-3778 or visit us online at orthocenter-si.com. It's not easy to decide what you want to be when you grow up. Even if you're well into adulthood, so many options. Firefighter, welder, miner, nurse, artist, chef, police, architect, and more. Red Lake College offers over 100 degree and certificate programs. And now you can find the one that fits at the RLC Open House on Thursday, October 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Ina campus. Still not sure what you want to be? Be a warrior. See you at the Open House on Thursday evening, October 9th from 6 to 8 at the RLC campus in Ina. Second Chance Auto in Mount Vernon offers great quality cars at bank rate financing. That's great news. Who else in the area can offer you that? For nearly 35 years, they've been helping people with good and not so good credit get a good vehicle at a good price. Just make your payments on time, and they'll save you thousands of dollars on the total price of your vehicle. Find out if you qualify by calling Jimmy and the crew at Second Chance Auto today at 244-4582. Second Chance Auto. Or stop by Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. You won't be disappointed. This is Mount Vernon Rams football from WMIX Sports. The Second Chance Auto Halftime Show starts now. Welcome back, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Halftime here from Frank Flyer Field in Carbondale. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside. Jeff Crow has the camera. Hunter Schrader back at our WMIX studios in Mount Vernon. Second Chance Auto, another buy here, pay here dealer in the area. Can save you hundreds, even thousands on the total cost of your vehicle. Second Chance Auto can step by their impressive lot and find out more. Second Chance Auto, Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Of course, a big night here. Homecoming night for the Terriers. Winless on the season. The Rams haven't done much to help that cause. They lead 35-7. to seven. That's a good lead. Good start. Mount Vernon jumped it with that first play from scrimmage. A 53-yard touchdown run from the hyphen. And after that, it's been all Mount Vernon. One little touchdown right after that first one. But other than that, great. Well, I think he'll take that performance. First play from scrimmage is a 53-yard touchdown run for DeMontez Miller. Great to make it 7 to nothing. You come back, your defense bends and slightly breaks. They give up uh, the touchdown, of course, on the direct snap run by the quarterback, Whitfield. But then that is all the Carbondale scoring we had in the first half. Yeah, that was it. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later on here on our Second Chance Auto Halftime Show. It is home coming night. We'll have an extended Second Chance Auto Halftime Show. Right now, take a moment to talk about the pink out night coming up. At Mount Vernon Township High School, it's the second annual Pink Out Night. This year, something new, at least as I recall it being something new, is you can sponsor a jersey this year for $100. It's a suggested donation. You can sponsor a, a jersey. You can put somebody's name on the back, whether it's a survivor or somebody who may have succumbed in, in their battle with cancer or just somebody who, who deserves their name on the back of a Mount Vernon Ram uniform. And it's a great deal. You can contact Julie Hayes, the future business leaders of America Advisor, for more information. You can find that information at mvths.org. You can also find your order forms for the Pink Out t-shirts and hoodies. Of course, they're going to have some available the night of, but in this case, if you might happen to wear maybe 2X or you need, or a size bigger, I should say, or you need uh, to have a specific order, you can order online, mvths.org, and by order online, I mean, go print the form off. You'll have to get it to Julie Hayes, of course. You can also get the WMIX Sports Winning Edge Rally Towels, and if you want to see what those look like, Simply follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or find us on Facebook because we posted a pic when we got those towels earlier in the week. That might have been Monday or Tuesday that we got them. But a great-looking towel, and we certainly hope that you'll take advantage of those for just a dollar apiece and all of the proceeds. We'll go to the Susan G. Coleman for the Cure Foundation. That'll be on Pink Out Night against the Central Valley Orphans, a game you'll hear on 94.1 FM, AM 940, or watch online at WMIXSports.com. We hope you'll take advantage help raise some money as the Rams hope to tackle cancer on Friday, October the 17th. We will, of course, have plenty of WMIX Sports Rally Towels available. Don't forget to order your pink out T-shirts and your hoodies and all of your merchandise and maybe even sponsor a jersey 
to help out the cause. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll have more on your Second Chance Auto Halftime Show. This is Rams Football, powered by Community First Bank. Automart Salem is your local buy here, pay here, car deal. My name is Matt Collier, and I am the manager of Automart in Salem. If you're in need of a vehicle, no matter what your credit history, we accept all credit applications. You buy here, pay here. It really is that simple. Contact me, Matt Collier, next to Schmidt Ford of Salem. Call 548-8611. Find us on Facebook or go to automartofsalem.com. Rams fans, check out the Rams apparel at Winning Edge. They have the largest supply of MVPHS t-shirts, hoodies, golf shirts, caps, bags, and more. If you can't find the right item, they'll customize it for you. In addition to the great selection of Rams gear, Winning Edge specializes in screen printing and embroidery, which are the longest-lasting promotional items. Winning Edge will get you the right active wear for your business, school, or event, and will help you make a lasting impression. Find Winning Edge downtown at 212 South 9th Street, on the web at winningedgeusa.com, and on Facebook. Watch the Rams online at WMIXSports.com. Powered by Red Lake College. Welcome back. WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Second Chance Auto Halftime Show. Home coming on from Flank, Frank Blyer Field here in Carbondale. 35-7 the score. Rams on top here at the end of the first half. And I think you'd take this 35-7 score in any game, but especially a game that you must win. The Rams have played almost flawlessly. Best half of the year, obviously. I mean, besides the Charleston start, you know, to that game, which ended up for a blowout for the Rams, to come on the road and to be able to get here and get a win and do it on homecoming is a pretty good way to look at it. And, of course, you got to do this not only tonight and finish it out, but three more weeks as well before you have any more chance, a chance to be in the playoffs. Of course, we talked about the drives the Rams had. It seemed like every drive has ended in a touchdown, lone exception obviously, obviously being the drive that ended that first half. Didn't have much time to work with. But the Rams have moved the ball well and through two quarters have five touchdowns to show for their six possessions. And it's good. And again, that's, a, that's the beautifulness of this Mount Vernon offense right now. They really took advantage of the wind in the first quarter having it at their backs. Well, took advantage of it, and that's what you have to do when you need to take advantage of the situation in front of here. Rams obviously have to win out to make the postseason and have gotten nice showings tonight offensively. I mean, you look at Dylan Reeves. He's been able to do a lot on the ground. DeMontez Miller-Gray has been able to do a lot on the ground, and they've both been able to score on various drives. And, and again, that, again, I like what Mount Vernon has done tonight. And I think early on you saw the Rams come out with a little edge, a little different vibe about them early on, running the football quickly and hard. The blockers up front picking up the defenders for Carbondale quickly and carrying out their blocks to the fruition of the play. And uh, this Mount Vernon team, I think, obviously been to the playoffs last year and know the urgency that is at hand in order to have to win four games in a row to get in the playoffs. And this team looks like it's playing with an edge. And obviously coming down and ruining somebody's homecoming is always fun to do when you're doing that. No doubt about that. We need to take another break on your Second Chance Auto Halftime Show. This is Rams Football powered by Community First Bank. Every other incident, it seems as if someone says, you'll never believe what happened. This is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers of Mount Vernon and Salem. I assure you, Landers Collision Centers has seen and fixed it all. Whether your toddler got behind the wheel and backed into the trash cans, a kid at school thought it would be funny to take off in your son's truck and sideswipe a brick wall, or even if your ex took a major league whack at your truck windows, we can make it go away, and we certainly won't judge. As a direct repair facility for many insurance companies, we take care of just about everything, even getting you into a temporary vehicle and offering free premium detailing for the life of your vehicle. That's the Landers difference. Top to bottom, big or small, Landers fixes them all. Come see us in Mount Vernon and Salem and ask us about free detailing for the life of your vehicle or call 1-888-LANDERS. That's one triple eight landers There's no other Toyota dealership like it in the region. It's totally technically chic and totally new. Tyler Toyota. Like car heaven. It's totally brand new. Totally built for you. Welcome to Tyler Toyota. The best car and truck buying experience in Southern Illinois. Total. Total. Totally. We're celebrating the grand opening. Newly renovated and highly celebrated Tyler Toyota. Totally. Tyler Toyota. Your home for the Mount Vernon Rams is WMIX Sports, powered by Community First Bank. 
Welcome back to your Second Chance Auto Halftime Show, AM 940, worldwide at WMAXSports.com. Second Chance Auto, the largest selection of pre-owns. Price under $10,000 in one location. Find it right there on Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Second Chance Auto proudly supports the Mount Vernon Rams, who lead the Carbondale Terriers here on the road 35-7 to at the break. And we talked about how big of a first half it was. Now we have some scoring and stats to show. Well, for. it was a big first half. Mount Vernon had 16 first downs to seven for Carbondale. Turnovers were very nice as well. Mount Vernon had no turnovers in the first half, 2-1 for Carbondale. Then, of course, in penalties, Mount Vernon did have five penalties for 45 yards, one for 10 for Carbondale. Rushing department, though, was all Mount Vernon, unofficially 239 to 57 for the Rams. Mount Vernon also had 75 yards rushing to or passing to 10 for Carbondale, and that led to three over 300 yards of offense in the first half for Mount Vernon compared to only 67 for Carbondale, which gives you a score at the half of Mount Vernon 35, Mount Carbondale 7. There you go. Scoring and stats here on your second chance auto halftime. Show it was an impressive two quarters of football for the Rams. Can they come out and replicate that? In the second half, we will find out. Of course, it's homecoming here, extended halftime show. Carbondale celebrating their homecoming, but unfortunately on the field, not much to celebrate. We have scores we need to give you from around the region. We'll take a break and come back and get you a Bird Watson Drug Scoreboard. This is Rams Football from WMIX Sports. It's not easy to decide what you want to be when you grow up. Even if you're well into adulthood, so many options. Firefighter, welder, miner, nurse, artist, chef, police, architect, and more. Red Lake College offers over 100 degree and certificate programs. And now you can find the one that fits at the RLC Open House on Thursday, October 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Ina campus. Still not sure what you want to be? Be a warrior. See you at the Open House on Thursday evening, October 9th from 6 to 8 at the RLC campus in Ina. Help tackle cancer with the MBTHS Future Business Leaders of America at their second annual Mount Vernon Rams Takeout Game on Friday, October 17th. The Rams host the Centralia Orphans at J.D. Shields Memorial Stadium. Get your WMIX Sports Winning Edge Pink Rally Towels for just $1. All proceeds go to the Susan G. Coleman for the Cure Foundation. Get your Pink Rally Towels in advance at Winning Edge on 9th Street in Mount Vernon or grab a towel and official Pink Out T-shirt on game night from the Mount Vernon High School FBLA. It's that simple. Cheer the Rams on the victory over the Centralia Orphans and help tackle cancer. It's the second annual Mount Vernon Rams Pink Out Game, Friday, October 17th. Find your WMIX Sports Pink Rally Towels for just $1 at Winning Edge, 212 South 9th Street in Mount Vernon. Or contact FBLA advisor Julie Hayes at 246-5617. Learn to live healthy, learn to live well, and learn how you can live free from unexpected medical expense with a major medical expense policy for Pekin Insurance and the Page Agency. Health insurance that covers hospital, medical, and surgical expenses offers a wide choice of deductibles and a non-tobacco user discount, too. Rising medical costs don't have to be a problem with a major medical expense policy from Pekin Insurance. This is coverage we hope you'll never need, but you just can't be without. Call the Page Agency at 242-7000 about a major medical health insurance plan today. Streaming worldwide at WMIXSports.com. This is Mount Vernon Rams football from WMIX Sports. Welcome back, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us for your second chance auto halftime show. Halftime here, obviously, at Carbondale on homecoming night. 35-7, to the Rams are on top. Bert Watson Drug brings you our scoreboard updates. They're celebrating 40 years. We have scores from all over the region. Here tonight. All over as so I get another one here late at the juncture, and we look around. We start with the locals. In the second quarter, Pinckneyville trails A.J. 14-7. At the half, Nashville leads Carterville 24-21. Ducoin leads Sparta at the half 29-12. Benton now on top in the third quarter, 7-0. Heron at the half leads Massac County 42-28. Of course, Benton leading Harrisburg 7 Nothing. And then West Frankfurt leaves to Murphy at the half, 49-6. to six. Marion leads out off the half, 28-7. Cahokia leads Centralia, 14-7. That's in the third quarter. Carmi, 22. Hamilton County, nothing at half. Chester over CZR, 34-14 at the half. El Dorado leads on the road at Fairfield, 30-28. to 28. As we go to the non-conferences, uh, at least on the non-conference schedule for the Rams, Mount Carmel. 
Trails Jasper, Indiana, 47-0 at the end of three. Mascuda leads Triad at the half, 27-0. And Effingham leads Taylorville, 21-7. That's at the half. And Mississippi Valley play Waterloo over Jersey, 14-zip. And Highland over Civic, 28-21. That is at the half. That is at the half, of course. At the half here, 35-7. Rams are on top of Carbondale. Extended halftime break with the homecoming here at Frank Blyer Field, and it will have to end eventually here before, so we can start the second half. Second chance, I don't can't forget about Bird Watson Drug on the scoreboard update. 40 years they're celebrating tomorrow from 10 until 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 12th and Main. You'll find all kinds of raffles and food and dipping Dots, bounce houses, and so much more, especially a lot of fun at Bird Watson Drug. Brittany Newman will be there from 10 to noon for WMIX FM tomorrow. You won't want to miss that again. That is at 12th and Broadway, or 12th and Main, rather, tomorrow, Bird Watson Drug. This is your second chance auto halftime show as we continue on. We'll take one more break. We'll come back. We'll talk about what the Rams need to do in the second half. Maybe just keep doing what they did in the first half. See what they need to do to come away with this win and get their first conference win of this 2014 campaign. Taking a break, this is Rams football from WIX Sports. At Banterra, we understand that banking is a relationship. It's a friendly face that knows your name, understands your needs, supports your goals. Banterra offers a complete range of personal and business banking products with competitive rates and loans that range from small projects to multi-million dollar opportunities. We offer conveniences such as online banking, mobile banking, and direct deposit. For a strong community bank with exceptional customer service, Banterra is a smart choice for your banking needs. Banterra Bank, a proud supporter of Southern Illinois High School Sports. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Smith Chevrolet Cadillac in Mount Vernon has a state-of-the-art collision center. Impeccable in reputation and second to none. When your vehicle needs repair, come see us. Our collision center offers extra repair using top quality products at competitive prices on any brand of vehicle. We work directly with most major insurance companies to make your visit as easy as possible. You'll get fast turnaround guaranteed. Customer satisfaction is our number one goal at Schmidt Chevrolet Cadillac, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Broadcasting live from the WMIX Sports Mobile Studios, driven by Tyler. This is Mount Vernon Rams football. Welcome back, WMIX, WMIXSports.com, your second chance auto halftime show. Hallelujah, the teams are back out on the field. <laughs> they will warm up for the second half. This, um, we were done at 8.15. It was an hour and 15-minute first half. We're currently on a, an 18-minute. I guess that's not. Yeah, so you got two minutes here plus three to warm up. Just seemed like forever. Oh, so we're not on the three-minute clock yet either. No. Oh, that no, is no, forever. Because then. both teams have to be on the field. You're right. <laughs> well, we will continue to do what we do best, and that is fill time here on a Second Chance Auto Halftime. Show Rants Football is presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Don't forget video every week this season at WMA. Well, 8 of 9 at least, WMIXSports.com. You'll be able to find that. Tonight, the Rams have played very well. Five touchdowns on six drives. Their sixth drive, of course, was... With only just seconds remaining on the second quarter clock. If you're the Rams, what do you need to do here in the second half? Just see, is it just do more of what you did in the first? Just it, basically, that's what it is. I mean, it, it's one of those deals where you don't want to get complacent because you're up by so much, and you don't want to get in a case of uh, we're done with this game. We can get on the bus and head back north on I-57. This is a case that Malvern still has. 24 minutes of work left to do and you know Carbondale get the ball start gets the ball to start the second half if Carbondale were to come out and get a score maybe get a stop get another one get back within two touchdowns it is a case that they could get back into the ball game so interesting um, that you got to play the game out you cannot be complacent about everything here well, I think complacency is not a habit that you want to discover and for the the Rams you know knowing that they have to win out to achieve the postseason that puts an entirely different complexion on your season when you know that you have to win every game is a must win so in theory to borrow a tired cliche for the Rams the playoffs started this week it's one of those deals where you feel like you should be able to win it, you're you have got to believe you've got to have a favor to win and in this one obviously up 35-7 
you feel like at home next week against Cahokia, who is playing in a nail-biter right now at home against Centralia, that you could play with Cahokia and you can play with Centralia. So in all next three tonight and next two weeks at home, you feel at home you ha should have a little bit of an advantage. You feel some confidence going in. You can't get too confident, but you have to have some swagger about you to believe you can pull this trick off and win it four in a row. Well, four in a row is not going to be an easy task. We talked about Carbdale, of course. A close battle with Centre tonight at home. We've we've seen the Marion outs off results at this point. You see Mount Carmel getting throttled right uh -oh. now on the road to Jasper, Indiana. And Carbondale has been flagged because they were not on the field with three minutes to go. Uh oh. You are required to be fully on the field within three with before the three minute mark. What happens is, like for instance, not tonight, but most half times you set the clock at fifteen when it hits zeros. You have to be on the field because then the three-minute warm-up period begins. Mount Vernon was well out in front. Then Carbondale just showed up on the field with about two minutes to go in the warm-up period, and that will not go well, and Carbondale will be flagged. Not what you want to happen to start your second half warm-up, that's for sure. They w will start with the football, of course, unless there was some sort of error on a coin toss. Not that that's ever happened before. Not in Carbondale <laughs> or Texas UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. That's going to be brought up in February. Oh, you bet it will. A second chance auto halftime show. Yes, it is still halftime here from Carbondale. <laughs> Homecoming night. They're celebrating. A minute 20 left on the warm-up clock here before we start second half action. Danny Zawinski alongside. I'm Chris Hugo. Jeff Crow is battling the elements for you, all of you watching at WMAXSports.com. Hunter Schrader in the cozy confines of the AM 940 studio back at the powerhouse on Broadway. 35-7, Rams up four touchdowns here at the break. and What a first half it was for this Rams football team. If the first half is any indication, you hope the second half is just as good, if not better. Well, you hope that's the way it goes on a night that's 48 degrees and feels like 45 with that 10-mile-an-hour wind out of the northwest. So some people have left other venues and wimped out and went home that we know of that we consider correspondence. But, you know... It's one of those deals where Mount Vernon right now needs to just come out and play solid. And you feel like if you can get, you know, stop Carbondale here on the opening drive and maybe get the ball back, if you could somehow get another touchdown and go up 42-7, 35-7 is comfortable, 42-7 be real comfortable with an offense for Carbondale that likes to plot it up and down the field. Well, and Carbondale, I mean, they're not without brilliance. They've done some things tonight that looked pretty good at times. Uh, the thing is, is that with their offense, of course, looks single wingish at times, as you said on that that direct snap that went for a touchdown for 13 mm -hmm. yards for Whitfield. The first, you know, double tight. Rams end up stacking the box defensively, and the, when the Rams do that, they've looked pretty good regardless of the team they're playing. So yeah, it's almost as like they're playing right in the hands of the Rams defense at that point. Well, and, and that point when you have to, when you you know, you're talking about two teams that have to play downhill to win, and what I mean by that is they have to be ahead because Mount Vernon and Carbondale both obviously can throw the football, but it's not going to happen as much as when they have it and they're going to run the football. So Carbondale right now has to kind of pick up the pace. you got to have a couple of plays called each time. You don't have time to waste to plod your way down the field. Now, what will happen is Mount Vernon will get to kick off. What this is is a penalty, so they will get – Carbondale has been assessed a 15-yard penalty to start the second half. So Mount Vernon, instead of kicking off from the 40, will now kick off from the Terrier 45, and that is because Carbondale was late to get out at halftime. Usually somebody comes out and tells them or lets them know or something along that line, and somebody forgot to. We'll start the third quarter. The Mount Vernon Rams on top, 35-7. to seven. Fresh 12 on the clock. Back to return for the Terriers. They're going to be games over oh, before we start. I'm going to get to Nelson as this is going to take a bounce. And stepping out of bounds, Carbondale's intended target, which is actually Sidney Owsley, stepped out of bounds at about the 30, where Carbondale will have first and 10. So a short bounce on that one off of the Ram kick went soft that time. And now it'll be first and 10 for the Terriers from their own 30. And that is where we start. Holy wow. cow, we're back to football. Golden horseshoe. What? Holiday just to the home run. No. 10-6. Oh, that's with me. You can listen to it on 94.1 yeah. FM if you want to watch us online. You don't need to. Smart TV or your tablet. Well, I'm not going to discourage people from listening to the Cardinals on the FM. As we have a quarterback out of the shotgun, Sidney Owsley will get the carry as this is going to be pushed ahead to about the 34. 
We're going to gain a four, second, and six now as we're finally underway with second half action here in the third quarter. Rams on top, 35-7. to seven. Always bank in your hometown team, Community First Bank. Home of the one account featuring free checking and high-yield interest. Member FDIC. Carbnell swaps in and out quite a bit. Slaughter will be the back alongside the quarterback. Calvin Whitfield, he is a senior, 6'4", 205, looks every bit of it. Slaughter is going to get the carry. Quarterback tried to run to the left as a decoy, and he's going to find some yardage. He'll break away at midfield, 45-40, being chased by the Rams, 25, 20, 15, 10, foot race, 5, uh -oh. touchdown. What did I tell you? Too quick, too fast, 34, 66-yard carry, first down, touchdown, and they're right back kind of in the ball game. It's 35-13, the point after from Michael Stuckey will be pending, assuming that they are going to go for one. You would assume mm -hmm. they would at this point. Nice left-footed kicker. And see if they can't cut it to 21 points. Pretty impressive little run there. Red Lake College powers the video streaming. Watch it online at WMIXSports.com. You find a quick link to their website, rlc.edu. See which of their more than 100 degree and certificate programs is right for you. Be a warrior. Red Lake College, your journey starts here. Finally, the snap. Here comes the kick, and the kick sneaks in the uprights. It's going to be 35-14. Well, Changes you just don't feel comfortable. Can't now. You don't feel very comfortable. There are going to be games over before we get there. <laughs> We're going to be one of the last ones, if not the last one, done tonight with the long first half and then the extended halftime. See what the Rams can do here on this drive. They move the ball well in the first half. You hope that they can move it well again here in the second. Well, on this, you see a little more bounce to the step here on this sideline. And Carbondale right now has gotten not completely back in the game, but it is making it a little bit less comfortable for the Rams. As we await their kickoff, barring any trickery from the Terriers and the left-footed. Michael Stuckey. Stuckey, 6'2", 165 pounds, a senior left-footed kicker here for Carbondale. And right now, 11-12 left on the third quarter clock, 35-14 the score. Rams up three touchdowns. So much for that penalty to start the second half. Here comes the kick from Carbondale. It's going to be on the ground. It's going to make its way to Miller Gray at about the 20. Almost dropped it about the 25. And he'll get to about the 22 where he's pushed back and there's going to be a flag. That's got to be a face mask of some sort. He's worried about Miller Gray. He's had, had the loaf of bread look. Dead ball. I don't understand that signal. Me neither. How can it be a dead ball on a playoff kickoff? Nah, it beats me. Okay, you did see the hand go up like I did, correct? Uh-huh. So we have a flag on Carbondale. They're going to call five yards for a hold. Okay. Or a face mask. I don't know about that one. You and me both. What we do know is it'll be first and ten for the Rams from their own 28-yard line. Ball spotted between the hashes. Left to right, they go here in the third quarter. Split to the right side, Waith. On the left, it'll be Tyus. Quarterback Reeves under center. Heiner, Hester, and Miller Gray are your backs. The senior quarterback trying to lead his team downfield for a sixth time tonight. Hester in motion. Here comes a snap. It's going to be a fake handoff. Reeves will go right up the middle where he's met by some contact. He'll get a couple yards in the play. It'll be second and eight. Well... Well, <laughs> some TV brethren, National Variety, are not making friends, accusing teams of doing things. Well, if you can do it, get away with it, do it. 10.45 to play in the third quarter here at WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside. Third quarter action. Rams on top of the Terriers, 35-14. to 14, Second and six from the 33. Ball between the hashes for the quarterback, Reeves. Under center he is. In motion, Miller Gray. Inside handoff to Andrew Heiner, the senior linebacker. Turned running back, had some running room. Forward progress should have taken him to about the 36, which would be a gain of about three, and it'd bring up third down mm -hmm. and about four. It, it, like we said, it's not too uncomfortable, but the problem is you don't you go three and out here, there's trouble. Yeah. Okay? And, and that's when Carbondale starts to believe a little bit more. 
Kind of have to drain the hope on third and two here for the Rams. Quarterback Reeves under center, split left and right. Hester in motion, inside handoff to Heiner, who found a seam, and he leans forward. Dives to about the 43-yard line. A gain of seven will bring up first and ten. So a nice conversion there on third down for the Rams as we drop below the 9.30 mark here in the third. Broadcasting live from the WMIX Sports Motor Studios, mobile studios even, driven by Tyler's. Visit the new improved Tyler's locations just west of Interstates 57 and 64 in Mount Vernon. Tyler's Toyota and Tyler's Buick GMC, totally new, totally Tyler's, totally first and 10 from the 43 with Miller Gray in motion. Inside handoff, Heiner, he's got running room as he gets first down yardage past midfield to about the 45. Wall Terrier's trying to push him back, but if they give him the due diligence, on forward progress, it's a first down and a gain of 10. The Class M baseball games at Pinckneyville are canceled for tomorrow and will be postponed until Monday. I'm sure rain knocked those out. <laughs> Look at here. We've been asked to breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Outstanding. 46-yard lines where the ball will be for the Rams here trying to keep it going downfield. They're in Carbondale territory. Ball spotted inside the near hash with a quarterback reason their center. Waith on the right. Left is Tyus. Hester in the left slot. Handoff's going to go to Heiner this time dialing up number 33. Mm -hmm. He'll plunge forward to about the 40. It'll be a gain of about five and a half. Brings up second and four. With 8.40 to go in this third quarter. Rams hanging on to a 35-14 lead. Just, let's think about this. What, that breakfast invite? No. Uh, no holding on Car Mount Vernon all night. Think about that. Thinking about it. No penalties. How good has the offensive line been? It's always been a pretty solid offensive mm -hmm. line. No doubt about that. All that yardage that they help provide as Reeves is going to take it right up the middle on his own carry. Dialed up number nine that time to about the 30. It'll be another gain of 10. It'll move the chains. 8-10 left to play in the third quarter. 35-14, Rams are up 21. Well, this is what you need after giving up the touchdown. you got to yep. keep moving the football and moving the chains and keeping that almighty possession. Pretty First Bank of the Heartland is the official voice of the Rams and Lady Rams here on WMIX. Next Lady Rams broadcast will be Monday night. Reeves, the quarterback under center. Miller Gray in motion. Handoff inside variety will go to Andrew Heiner. Heiner actually a pretty productive carry there. Somebody heard you About last night. Somebody heard you last night. <laughs> <laughs> you bet they did. Man Fred Man moment. So on about the 25-yard line for the Rams. It'll be second and five. Heiner cut it in half. 7.26 to play in this third quarter. Tony Wilt will present our player of the game later tonight. He's glad to help your family with all of their insurance needs. Give his office a call. Find him on the web at TonyWilt.com or look for the White State Farm Deep around town. Look at Miller Gray in motion. Sweep carry to the left side. He had to break a tackle. Now gets to the sideline. Has first down yardage. Doesn't get a huge gain on the play, but gets a gain maybe about eight. Either way, it's first and ten for the Rams with 7.07 to go, but I think he got out of bounds. 20th first down for the Rams. About out of room, aren't you? How many yep, do you allow I'll for? have to start over. I allow for 20. Well, there you go. Sometimes that happens. How about that? Kershaw allowed eight earned runs in September. He allowed eight tonight. <laughs> Wainwright allowed six earned runs in September. He allowed six tonight. That's interesting. Is this is going to be a carry up the middle, just right up the gut there for the Rams. Just shy of a first down as they started from the 18 on the carry. I thought that was Heiner again on an inside handoff. You say he got about seven. Yeah. As Mount Vernon keeps the chains moving, shortens the game. Touchdown here, gets that lead right back and erases that big play for Carbondale to start this third quarter. Reeves, the quarterback under center, ball on the far hash from the 11. He's going to keep it himself on the fake handoff, shy of a first down. He does break a few tackles, but all that probably for maybe a gain of one if he's fortunate. Robinson beats Lawrenceville tonight, 7-6, a battle of two teams. Effingham still leads Taylorville, 21-7. 
So it'll be third and one from the Carbondale nine on the far hash. It's spotted split wide to the right. Will be Derek Waith. On the left, it's Tyus Reeves under center. Curious to see what he goes to on third and short. Almost got Carbondale to jump. But almost isn't quite here on third and short. Now Miller Gray in motion. This is going to be Reeves keeping it himself. He's going to find some running room to the right side. Inside the five. Leans forward and dives in for the touchdown. They're going to wow. give it to him as he broke the plane. Nine-yard run for Dylan Reeves, and it's going to be 41-14. Well, Dylan Reeves scores. Nine-yard touchdown run. P and DMG are making quite the case for our player of the game award tonight. Yeah. And Mount Vernon continues to rack up points, yardage, first downs. Messing up my score sheet. About out of room on the touchdown chart. Bet you'll take that, though. Good oh, out. not a problem. Kick is up. Oh, and it hits the upright. There goes Clunk. perfection. <laughs> Just hit the left upright. Clank. That makes an awkward sound on, in the NFL. Well, the microphone's there. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like that sound... We were just discussing that at the restaurant tonight. Kind of like a ruler off of a desk. Yeah. A wood ruler. Plastic doesn't quite have the same effect. Huh. Yeah, be that as it may. Community First Bank of the Heartland, the official voice of high school sports here on WMAX 5, Jefferson County Branches, with responsive quality service for all of your accounts. Community First Bank would like to be the first to say, welcome back to personal banking. Member FDIC. That's a pretty good drive for the Rams. What say you? Yeah, I mean, you had to come back with something big there, and because you were able to come back with something big, you were able to knock some of that momentum down, and that was nice to see out of Mount Vernon. And now Carbondale kind of thinks, well, we have to start all over again, and that's not good. Kokia is leading Centralia 28-7 early in the fourth, so you feel like the Comanches will be coming in on a little bit of roll. That's definitely an interesting score. Yeah. Wonder about Centralia. McGowan, you know. a line drive kick on the ground, and this one is going to be muffed a little bit at 22, but the knees hit the ground from Ousley, and that's where Carbondale will start. First and 10 from their own 22 yard line. 5.34 left to go in this third quarter. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Equip your employee team in style. Check out Winning Edge for your team's uniforms in addition to fan apparel. Find Winning Edge downtown Mount Vernon at 212 South 9th Street and on the web at Winning Edge. USA.com. We're on the Twitterverse at WMIX Sports. Instagram as well. Facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. Saturday Sports Show comes your way tomorrow from 8 08 until 10 o'clock in the morning. Every week on AM 940 audio at WMIX Sports.com. Well, Carbondale has to go the long way again. Yes, they do. Whitfield, the quarterback out of the shotgun. Everybody tight. He's going to look downfield. I think Bauer's got a jersey grab. He slipped the tackle. And he's going to complete a pass at about the 29-yard line to number 10, LaCorda Kill, who will finally be brought down at said 30. I thought Darius Johnson and Brighton Bowers on the tackle. Nope, that's Jalen Rush and Brighton Bowers. Uh, he, they, had, they had the quarterback dead to right, two shirt grabs. <laughs> and uh, then they had the opportunity to bring down the receiver after a big hit. But a big hit's one thing. Wrapping is another, another, and that was not done. 5.04 left in the third. Second and seven for the Terriers from their own 31-yard line. Near hash spot. They'll go right to left here in this third quarter. Whitfield with it. He's going to hand off to Slaughter. He's not going to get much on it. Quickly penetrating the line to the Rams' defense. And Bowers, I think, helped with the tackle. He'll get an assisted tackle. Let's see who else was in on the pile. Thought I saw Gage Burrows amongst some company. Maybe even a member of the secondary and Xavier Tyus in on the play. Kokia leads 28-7 over Centralia. Marion still leading... Altoff in that third quarter, 28-7, as they have homecoming at Belleville. So Marion will get home later than we will. They're, still, they're just getting started. We're going pass each other. Yeah. Right about the junction there in the King City. Whitfield out of the shotgun, single back set, double tight. Let's see. Going to fake the handoff, keep it himself on an option, and make a nice spin move to get past Tyus. Right about the first down marker. It'd be a gain of about six and a half, and the judge is pointing toward a first down with 405 left to go Here in this third. Here come the judge. Here come the judge. It's on amazing the down. number of judge related shows there are on the television now. Some sitcoms, some drama, some yeah. faux reality and syndication. Point aside, it's 41-14. Rams on top here in the third. It's Carbondale still with the football. Again, some more offensive subs into the game. 
for this Terrier team. The Rams are going to try to put pressure up front, stack the box here on Carbondale. Probably going to run. Nope, looking to pass. Quarterback going to be flushed out of the pocket. Ezra there to give chase, and now Arcuri is going to push him out of bounds. Eh, just past the 40-yard line. Going to be a slight gain, maybe a gain of about ooh, gain of about six. Again, perspective. Depth perception, not the best thing we've got going for us here. Nope, not going to give them the forward progress, I thought. They're going to stop at about the 36. Wow. Yeah. Thought he did a little better than that, unless he stepped out early. But Ezra Smith, the sophomore, who's played some crucial minutes for Jared Shaner on the D-line, came in and, and really flushed the quarterback out. Sidney Owsley is in the backfield with the quarterback, Whitfield. And now it's going to be handoff Sidney Owsley. There's Brighton Bowers to bring him down at about the 37-yard line. Gain of about one. It'll be third and seven now for the Terriers. Brighton Bowers, the team's leading tackler, came in tonight with a total of 46. It's kind of been a beast at times. Uh-huh. Getting a lot better as the season goes on, learning some things. Follows us on Twitter, so should you, at WMIX Sports. See what the Terriers do here. Third and seven on their own 37. 306 left to go in the third quarter. Community First Bank of the Heartland, home of the one account. Free checking with high yield interest. Member FDIC. One means more. Community First Bank. Whitfield the snap out of the shotgun. Looking downfield. That's going to be overthrown. Intended receiver was Niles Hoffman. The 215 pound tight end that stands 6'5. So, if the Terriers weren't going to punt, the PA guy says they are. Fourth down and seven with 2.51 left here in the third. 41-14. Rams are 5 of 6 on PAT tonight. A big improvement. Yeah, and that will help out. And now again, Carbondale will punt with the win as the clock is stopped. 2.51 to go in the third. This game, I believe, is safe based on time. Time and laws of average. As Brighton Bowers to avoid a penalty. He's trying to keep the... Carbondale punter up as fair catch for Tyus at about the 25-yard line where the Rams will have it first and 10 with a 41-14 lead and 2.44 worth of clock to work with here in the third quarter. you got to love this Ram effort tonight. Yeah, very good effort by Mount Vernon right now. And 2.44 to go. You're up by 27 points. You want to run the football, run the clock, and not let Carbondale up off the mat anymore in this ball game. 44 left. Third quarter action from Frank Blyer Field in Carbondale. Dylan Reeves and the Rams take over at their own 25 after the fair catch by Tyus Miller Gray in motion. Inside handoff to Andrew Heiner. He's at the 35. Let it get to the 37. Yep. Run that clock. Get first downs. Move those chains. Move on down the road. Go to get another win. Get to 2-4 and four and take your chances with the Comanches at home next week. Curious to see what the official stats look like when we get a Coach Saner midweek. This coming week, a lot of guys have had nice nights on the ground. Dylan Reeves, uh -oh. Devontae Miller, Gray, and Andrew Heiner, especially. Hester has had a good night. Fantasy football teams in the NFL, beware. Ooh. New testing starts Monday. 2.20 to go in the third quarter. Some things are better left alone. As Miller Gray is going to get to pitch to the left side, trying to get to the outside as he's near the sideline. Cuts back toward the far hash at midfield. Going to be brought down from behind. They're not going to get, well, they're going to give a fair spot as that'll be actually at about the 48. And the Terrier, no, they're going to go to the 47 now as they take an extra step for an extra yard. Where the Rams will have it first and 10. Nice gainer on the ground for DMG. And it was, and again, he's getting close to, if not past 100 yards already, as Mount Vernon again in Carbondale territory, marching the ball at will up and down the field. One fifty-three left to go in the third. Forty-one to fourteen, Rams on top, and this looked like a case of Dylan Reeves taking care of his own number there. Got maybe a gain of one. It'll bring up second and nine. Well, the first game of the night's over. Carmi beats Hamco forty-two to eight. <laughs> nice to see Andy Palmer helping us out tonight. Carlisle leading Westland fifteen-six to eighteen. Left to go in the ball game. <laughs> up there at Carlisle. So he posted Andy a Paul. young picture of him the other day. Woo, see that stash? Yeah, good for stash month. We might see a little bit of Andy Paul. We are going to fall. see a little bit. Or close to winter. Buddy of mine, Darren Smith, the AD as well. Nice. Second and nine for the Rams from the 45. Reeves is going to lose the oh. football, and it looks like it might have been tipped out of bounds. That could yeah. be 
He tried to flip it outside as he was coming down, and Carbono got a piece of the football, and that could have been dastardly and disastrous. It was disastrous, and I think if you land on it or whatever, like DMG got out there, what you want to do is kick that thing out of bounds. Don't let anybody land on it in a black jersey and take off the other way. So Mount Vernon has on the left hash, 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Marion now leading Altoff 28-7 at the end of three. Another Bird Watson drug scoreboard. 41-14 Rams here with 30 seconds left in the quarter. Inside handoff is going to go to Andrew Heiner. And he is going to be stopped. And after the loss, it'll be fourth and ten. I can't imagine the Rams will try another play here in the third quarter, but come back and try it again in the fourth. We'll have plenty of scores coming up in the fourth quarter. As me, me, we may be one of the later games here as we head deeper into the fourth quarter once it begins. The Rams are going to be content with not calling a final play. We have reached the end of the third quarter. Mount Vernon 41, Carbondale 14. This is Rams football powered by Community First Bank. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. Uh, now you have heard about our new one checking product. The new one account is a high interest earning free checking account designed for everyone. Unlike other banks that pay interest on higher balance, this account pays interest on all balance. From high schoolers to Warren Buffett, one will work for you. You can talk to one of us at 244-3000 to learn about the details. One, exclusively at Community First Bank. You will be one happy customer, member of FDIC. They don't need fancy sales gimmicks or billboards at Second Chance Auto in Mount Vernon because it's their reputation for honesty and fairness that make friends tell friends about them. What other buy here, pay here dealership in the area offers you bank rate financing? Second Chance does. You can save up to thousands on the total cost of your vehicle. Not sure if you qualify? That's easy. A two-minute call to 244-4582 will get you started. Or stop by Second Chance Auto, Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. You won't be disappointed. We're on Instagram at WMIX Sports. This is Mount Vernon Rams football. Welcome back, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. 41-14, the score is the Rams have the football here in the fourth, but they have fourth down and are looking to punt for the first time tonight. For the Terriers, back to return, Sam Brunow. And it looks like an Owsley. This is going to be a high punt, a little bit of hang time. It'll go out of bounds, probably about the 22 if they want to spot it accurately. No way. Uh-oh. That's a horrible spot. Uh-oh. Just being honest. Didn't like that, huh? No, that's bad. Better not be where they really spot it. It is. They're going to say the 29-yard line. That's about seven yards shy. I watched the shadow in the lights. Where's he at? Oh, not, not that, that one. shadow. He's watching the game. Kokia. He's probably not happy with right yeah, now. Yeah, Koki is now winning 38-20 in the fourth. Although the, uh, the sun to that shadow is here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the celestial sun, not the... Yeah, yeah. that's true, too. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> the light that provided the shadow, I should say. First and ten for the Terriers on their own 29-yard line near hash. Left to right, they go here in the fourth quarter. The quarterback, Whitfield, out of the gun. Going to be looking downfield here with such a large deficit phase. And him completes a pass to number 33, Sam Brunow. At about the 35-yard line, they're going to give credit to the 36 gain of seven. It'll bring up second and three, 11.45 to go here in the ballgame. 41-14, Rams on top of Carbondale and South Seven Conference action. Looking for win number two, looking for their first conference win here in 2014. We're back on 94.1 FM and AM 940, as well as video next week at WMIXSports.com. Carbondale comes to town. Still out of the gun, Whitfield. He's looking left. He's going to throw right down the middle. Picked off by Tyus. Tyus already has a fumble recovery for a TD. Not looking to break to the outside. Still on his feet at the 35. Going to be brought down, but Tyus comes up with another big, big defensive play. Second turnover of the night. Yeah, and that's a big play, and that kind of kind of makes it to the point where you just go, okay, Mount Vernon's going to win that second game of the year, get the two and four. And on the way to that second win, you need four. You've knocked off one, basically, now to get to the playoffs. 11.32 to go, and the Rams will have it first and 10, and the defense has stepped up when it's needed to tonight. It'll be first and 10, far hash at the 35. Right to left will go the Rams. Tyus, who came up with the INT, will be split off to the left. It'll be Waith on the right. Hester, Heiner, Miller, Gray are your backs for Dylan Reeves. 
You have to give a lot of credit to this O-line tonight for some of the holes that they've paved on the ground. And now it's going to be an inside handoff to Hester trying to plow his way forward. It was this game last year at home where he was injured, took a foot injury, after having a stellar night. That was the night he had that highlight reel thing. And oh, yeah, he bulldozed a guy. Yeah, bulldozed a guy, and then at that point it was it was the uh, end of the year at that point for him. Uh-oh. Get a five-yard gain, they're going to say. It looked like more than that. Probably six. Oh, they put it on the scoreboard second and four. They agree. From the 29 in Carbondale territory, 11 minutes to play here in the ball game. Under center is the quarterback Reeves. Up 41 to 14. He's going to keep it himself to get first down yardage on the keeper. Dives to about the 25. Gain of four. Looked like he got to the 24. So they're going to put it on the... Opposite side of the 25, and they'll give Reeves first down yardage on the carry. Ramps have dominated the clock tonight. Been a big help in route to what you assume as of now will be a convincing win. Should be. Very nice to have as well, obviously. Tyus off to the left, tied on the right side. Couple of wing backs in motion is Miller Gray. This is going to be a pitch to the near side. He's going to run left, trying to get to the sideline. He's at the 20, 15, 10. Pushed out of bounds at the 11. A couple of flags come in. Yeah, that's probably And then the back. one for effect that you don't need. Well, uh, you had a blocker out front for the Rams. He had a nice little jersey. Then the automatic threw his hands up like, I didn't do it. Well, that's like saying in school, I did it. So it'll work out to be a hold on Mount Vernon. It'll work out to be an eight-yard penalty. That's their sixth of the night on the Mount Vernon Rams, unfortunately. Carlisle is going to beat West on 15-9. A good win for them. Scoreboard updates Glory. provided by Bird Watson Drug. Celebrating 40th anniversary tomorrow. That will be a 12th of May from 10 to 2. They'll have all kinds of fun and raffles, bounce houses. Dippin' Dots, food, and more. You'll want to join them 10 to 2, celebrating 40 years. Bird Watson Drug. They've served Mount Vernon wonderfully <laughs> for four decades. Marion now at 30 to 7. Wow. As they are kind of on a little bit of a roll. Benton only left 13 9 on Harrisburg. Play in action. Is this going to be off to the right side on a sweep off the pitch for Miller Gray? He'll get about 8 on the carry. As he got into about the 17-yard line, it'll be second and two with 9.45 left to go in this fourth quarter. Still a 41-14 game, and it's been pretty convincing for the Rams. Yeah, it's been convincing. Now what you want to do is get out of here, run out the clock, nobody get injured, and get out of town and get back and ready for week seven at home. It's a big game coming up with the Cahokia Comanches. Carterville and Nashville are playing. What you can do better, I can do best. Carterville now leads Nashville 42-38. Wow. Might be able to listen to a little bit of that. We might. Is this going to be right up the middle on the carry for Heiner? First down yardage as he gets to about the six-yard line. Gain of 12 for Heiner. He's had a big night on the ground. Yeah, he just keeps racking up yardage. So the Rams are looking to get to 47 at least here if they can keep the progress going. 9-13 to play in the fourth quarter. 41-14 game. The Rams on top here from Frank Blyer Field. Community First Bank of the Heartland is the official voice of Malford and Rams football. Find them online at comfirstbank.net. Read more about that one account. Free checking with high yield interest. One means more. Right now, one more touchdown would mean a lot more for the Rams as Heiner's going to get the carry inside handoff style. Probably about a no gain, maybe to the five if forces to bring up second and goal. Well, it's very interesting. You just want to get a win and get out. Remember I told you about the score before the Cardinals-Dodgers game tonight? 10-9? Uh -huh. It's currently 10-8. to eight. Who's on top? Dodge, or the Cardinals are up 10-8. No. I didn't tell you who would win. They are not. Yep. And then the over-under for runs in that game total was 5.5. <laughs> Somebody did Look at last no. year's series. Pitch yep. going to the right side. Jylan Rush going to get on the action as he's inside the 5. Does he make his way into the end zone? He does for a score. It's 47-14. Jalen Rush gets a five-yard scamper for Pater, far corner. Well, yeah. And that, again, adds to the misery on this side of the home side of the stands as Mount Vernon will score again. Got my papers here somewhere. Rush for another touchdown. Uh -huh. Rush for a touchdown. I like that. I did, too. That was fun with Joel Rush back in the day. 
career leader in rushing yards in Malvern Township High School history, being threatened by Miller Gray as the PAT is good. So six of seven tonight is Dalton McGowan. Out of slots on score sheet, but it's good to have 48-14. So 8.08 left in the ball game. Rams back up by a margin this time of 34. You don't give up that one touchdown. This is a running clock affair. Oh. Murphy beats, yeah, I know we've been informed of that moments ago. Murphy beats Frankfurt 63-6. Uh, Ducoin's got a nice 42 to 12 lead on Spartan. The Indians are a team. I don't know. They got to get wins. I think they're going to run out of games. But the Indians are a team that are starting to make some noise out of Ducoin. And this 34 point game, Mount Vernon will have to get another touchdown to get the clock going. Well, it's good to see the Indians. I mean, that's just a team last year you didn't expect what happened to them to happen. I mean, you always expect them to be in the postseason and expect them to dominate. You know, for Al Martin and his staff with the co-op starting this year, obviously you, you look forward to any success they may have. Yeah, and, and with the addition of El Verado this year in Elkville, it is – I was going to say somebody mistyped that score to sent to me. But, uh, you know, Casey Westfield bounces back with a big one at Edwards County. You know, Edwards County coming to Black Diamond, I don't know how much toughness that helps into the diamond. Yeah. Okay. That, that's my thought. This will be actually a muffed kickoff return at about the five-yard line. Recovered by Nelson. Looking to roll right up the middle, but ran into a wall. Looked like Sam R. Curry with the initial contact brought him down. We're talking about Edwards County helping or not helping the diamond. I don't know. Not helping. I don't think it does. Heron leads Massac 63-28 late third. <laughs> Maybe a more formidable opponent than what they lost yeah. in conference play, I guess. But overall, in the grand scheme of things, I don't know that it's a huge help. Carbondale will take over. The Terriers with the football trailing 48-14 here in the fourth quarter. 7.59 to play. It'll be first and 10 from their own 21-yard line. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski on WYX. Courtesy of Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Slaughter's going to get the handoff, trying to sweep to the outside, and he'll be brought down. Nice. Throw? Nice no, tackle by tackle. Gabe Gross. Good tackle. I was trying to mutter. Oh, I got you. I mean, that was great pursuit from the linebacker spot. Just Man, took a great angle. Pretty. Had a great angle. Nice read on where he was going to go, and Gage Burroughs brings down number 44, Demond Slaughter, the sophomore, who's going to be a nightmare for a few years. 7.33 to play in the final quarter, 48-14. Carbondale trails. They have the football second and seven. Ball spotted on the near hash from their own 25-yard line. The quarterback working out of the shotgun, Calvin Whitfield. Played well tonight, just not many chances in front of him. As he faints, he's looking to pass green and Brighton Bowers. There's going to be a flag on the play. I'm not sure why. Well, this is going to be intentional grounding. Which and there it is. Will be it. Yep. It is Good going call. to be intentional grounding. Great call on your part. As Green and Bowers really put the pressure on the quarterback. I thought they flushed him out, but they did not. And Heron has three picks tonight for pick wow. sixes. Unbelievable. So if you have the Heron defense in your high school fantasy league, you're doing pretty well tonight. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. 7.15 to play here in the fourth quarter. 48-14. Loss of down, obviously. So it'll be, what, third and 26 from the six for Carbondale after the intentional grounding penalty on the quarterback. And now the Rams are going to stack the box and put on the pressure again. 7.15 left on this third and long situation. The quarterback from under center this time. Fains a pitch to the outside, and the ball carrier is going to be brought down at about the eighth. As Owsley, this is Sidney Owsley, will get the carry. It'll be fourth and forever for Carbondale as we drop below the seven-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Your community, your choice, your bank, with five locations and friends and neighbors on staff who understand your needs. Community First Bank keeps it simple. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC. So Carbondale, because of the situation, is going to probably go ahead and punt. It looks like... The Rams coming off of the field. We're going to have somebody call the timeout. 
Never saw the indication on whom, so this time out is brought to you by the Medicine Shop Pharmacy at 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon, where Dr. Eric Black and staff proudly support and salute the Mount Vernon Rams and Lady Rams, as well as TMS Mobility and Rehab. 48-14, Rams on top, 644 left to go in the fourth. And Rams are going to improve to two and four overall, but they will be one and two in the South Seven. Oh, Effingham up 28-7 on Taylorville. Doesn't help Mount Vernon. Uh, 353 left, so Effingham's going to win. Mount Carmel's lost, so Taylorville, Mount Carmel is lost. Triad losing big, they're going to lose. So, and Charleston was not a favorite all against Mount Zion, so you will only get three points this week if you're Mount Vernon at this point, which is not normal for the Rams. As out of the timeout, it'll be fourth and long. For the Terriers, fourth and 25 for their own seven. They're really backed up after that intentional grounding penalty. Good pressure applied, like we said, by Jesse Green and Brighton Bowers on that second down play. Mount Vernon had 27 points coming into this week. After five weeks, we'll now have 30 if everything holds. And now this punt is going to be at the 49. Where it bounces out of bounds, no chance for Tyus. We'll see where they actually spot it. And the Rams will have it in Carbondale territory regardless, and they actually give this one a great spot at the 49-yard line. They were on top of this. It'll be first and 10. Right to left go the Rams, and I have a feeling going to keep it on the ground. Well, if they don't, I'll be shocked, probably like you are. 6.37 left to go in the fourth quarter. We're in the WMIX Sports Mobile Studios, driven by Tyler's. TylerToyota.net, Tyler'sCars.com, and their newly remodeled locations. Just west of the interstates, 57 and 64 in Mount Vernon. It's totally new, totally Tyler's. Split to the right, Meriden. Nobody split left, they're tight. Quarterback Reese will be under center, first and 10 from their own 49. Sweep's going to be to Darius Johnson, getting the carry to the right side. Nice block by Paris downfield. Gets first down yardage to the 40. High steps it to the 35, down to the 30. Nice run by DJ out of the backfield. It'll be a first down for the Rams with 6.24 to go. 23 first downs for the Rams. Nice high step by Darius oh, Johnson. Wonderful. Almost prime time like. As if he wasn't taunting. Ow. Watch it there. Yeah, I got to open the window all the way before sticking the head out. 6.16 to play in the fourth quarter. 48-14. Rams on top. They'll get their second win. Hello. AJ beats DuCoin 20 to 14. Oh, wow. Millwood, the quarterback under center. Pitch is going to come to Jesse Green to the near side. Finds some running room at the 25. Flag on the play. Or he will be brought down. As of right now, it's a gain of five depending upon the penalty. El Dorado and Furfield running out of bulbs on the scoreboard. 52 44. El Dorado in the fourth. Wow. Waterloo battling back in their game. You know, high school defense is almost non-existent right now. In many parts of this geographical region, you're absolutely right. I mean, there are some. So after the hold, yeah. it'll be a bit of a loss for the Rams, who will actually have it. First and 16 from the Carbondale 36. 5.41 to play here in the fourth quarter. Up 48 to 14. Millwood in control under center. Johnson in motion. Millwood's going to plow it ahead. A glimpse of the future. Shy of the 30 got to about the 32. Gain of about four to bring up second and 12. Well, have to feel good. Get out of here. Get no one hurt. Get some other people some time under the lights. And that's what you got to do. Video at WMIXSports.com, powered by Red Lake College, a nationally ranked community college that can save you thousands. With smaller class sizes and over 100 degree and certificate programs, your journey starts here. Apply online at rlc.edu. Millwood under center. Johnson's going to get the pitch to the right side. He had a nice run earlier for a first down. Not quite going to have that same type of running room as he gets to the 30 with forward progress. It'd be a gain of two, bring up third and nine. With 4.44 left in the ball game. Many things that clock keeps on. Tick, 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 tick. Heron leads Massac 69-28. That is still in the third quarter. They have four touchdowns on four turnovers. 
That's a game that might actually long, run longer than us. No doubt. Benton beats Harrisburg 13-9, so Harrisburg can forget their playoff chances. They're usually the ones with the long games, the Benton Rangers. Yeah. It's very telling. Meredith to the left side split, split to the right. Paris, Johnson, Green are your backs. Inside handoff to Remington Paris. He finds some running room. Does he get a first down? Still on his feet inside the 20, down to near the 15-yard line. Looks like Remington Perry, Paris had a first down kick. Yeah. Mount Vernon running down the hill full speed. All, well, try it. All Mount Vernon here. Triad's battling back. They're only down 33-27 with three minutes left. So they're trying to get back in to give Mount Vernon another point. 30 after six weeks is pretty good. Five a week. Nashville now leads Carterville 46-42. Nice. In the fourth. Meredith left, Mullen right here for the Rams wide receiver set. The quarterback, Reed Millwood, will be under center, the junior QB. Second baseman for Tim Holloway and the baseball team. Inside handoff, going to go to the Remington Paris. He had a nice run a moment ago. There's going to be a flag as he gets inside the five. Close to a first down, but that yellow hanky may have something to say about it at the 339 mark of this fourth quarter. Rams still leading 48-14. Well, that's one of those where going to be holding and it's going to be about works out to about a five yard penalty. Mount Vernon's had eight penalties tonight. If there's anything you could pick out of this that would be bad, it's that Benton or Mount Vernon has had a lot of penalties. Effingham beats Taylorville. The Hearts are now five and one. That's a that's a possible location week ten. Yeah it is. Possibly on Halloween night, 3.26 to play in the fourth. I'm going to dress up as a radio guy. Huh. I might be fat pit bull, fat tall pit bull. 3.19 to play in the fourth, 48-14 the score. I do that every day. Is this going to be off tackle on the run to the right? Got to the original line of scrimmage, maybe plus some. After the holding building, made it first and 18 from the 23. Nice run on the ground by the Rams. It looked like Cavante Parker was getting a nice carry there. Kokia running away from Centralia now in the fourth, 44-20. I think that's a that's a unique score. I didn't expect that to happen. So Marion now leads again. They got another touchdown. That's at least a four-point run. Four touchdown spread now. 240 left here. Pretty big spread for the Rams. They lead 48-14. to 14. Millwood under center split left. Meredith in motion to Johnson. It's going to be a nice turnaround fake. Dylan Reese has executed it to perfection over the years. Now Millwood does the same as he gets to about the 9. Gain of 2. I give it up 2. It'll be 3rd and 5 with 220 left to go in the 4th quarter. Most importantly, what Millwood and this offense are doing right now are killing clock. Right. You're running, you're getting some guys some run here under the lights on a Friday night. Other than that, you are off to a win. Tough choice of a Tony Wilt State Farm player of the game tonight. Tony would love to help your family with all of their insurance needs. Find him in his office, find him on the web, give him a call, or look for the White State Farm Jeep around town and get to a better state with State Farm. Minute 55 left, Johnson in motion. Pitch is going to go to the right side, but the Carbondale defense quick to swallow up the gap. And it may even be a bit of a loss in the play to bring up fourth down with a minute 45 to go. Marion up 43-7 to seven at Belleville with two minutes to go. I mean, you have quite a few options for the player of the game tonight. Dalton yeah. McGowan might be an outside-the-box choice going 6-7 on PATs. Offensive line had a really good game that early. they did. Kind of privy to the offensive line, guys. Don't want to leave them out. If you're tired of Big Corporate Bank and you have a choice in Jefferson County, Community First Bank is at home and Dick Sign at Woodlawn and Mount Vernon. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. They did a great job there, definitely in consideration. As this will be a QB keeper for Millwood. He's trying to get into the end zone. Looked like the play stopped, but he didn't. And Ray Millwood gets oh, a QB wow. keeper for a score, and the Rams make it 54-14. to Ten-yard keeper, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Class L baseball game tomorrow for the Mount Vernon Casey Rams at Centralia. All that's been canceled, moved to Monday. Makes me wonder, have they announced anything for Coulter? I haven't heard anything yet. So hopefully I didn't just jinx Dalton McGowan, who's 6 of 7 so far tonight, looking to go 7 of 8. See if he can get it. As we have 105 left to go in the fourth quarter. The clock will run now. <laughs> Yeah, Carbell <laughs> Band's been phenomenal tonight. Yeah, they've stayed here the whole time. Oh, they're doing Fallout Boy a moment ago. Here comes the kick. It is up. 
And it splits the uprights, ladies and germs. It's 55 to 14. Well, kick good all Mount Vernon. The clock will run now. Those that were wanting that running clock will get it now. Community First Bank of the Heartland, the official voice of high school sports here on WYX, has been along every step of the way. And every step of the way tonight as the Rams have pitter pattered into the end zone for their scores. 55 14. Seven TDs on the night for this Ram offense. And what a great job they've done. Five is also the name of the game at Community First Bank with their five Jefferson County branches. But don't forget about one. One means more. <laughs> Free checking with high yield interest. Ask for one. Fairfield and El Dorado are tied at 52 with 3.30 to go in the game. 52. A lot of people are saying great games in Southern Illinois. I, I don't know where the defense is. McGowan on for the kickoff with a minute five left to go here in the fourth quarter in the ball game. Rams are going to improve two, two, and four. They'll be one and two in the south seven. As this is going to be off the ground at about the 25, a one knee. Stop there by number 58, Paul Wood. And that's where the Terriers will have it as the clock will continue to roll until this one is done as the Rams. We'll pick up a big win here tonight on the road, spoiling Carbondale's homecoming. We'll have the Schmidt Chevrolet Cadillac postgame show coming up in just a bit as the Rams have a dominant performance here on a chilly October Friday night. Yep, start October 1-0 when it counts. Um. 55-14 score. Clock continues to run. Carbondale technically don't even have to get a playoff here. Well, there's going to be a penalty. Somebody forgot to throw their laundry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No, I don't know. Timeout somebody. Why would you need timeout? Oh, well. Got to get something straight here. Timeout's presented by the Medicine Shop Pharmacy. 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Dr. Eric Black and his staff at the Medicine Shop. Oh. Proud to sponsor the Mount Vernon Rams and support the local community. 49-7, to seven, Marion beats Altoff. Woo! That's statement game. Conference title or not, that's statement game. Do you have room? I just need that much. Can you see? Mm. Okay. No, but I'll deal with it. You're fine. Clock stopped with about 11 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. 55-14 is the score as the Rams pick up a big South 7 Conference victory here tonight. Out of the timeout, Carbondale comes to the huddle. Quarterback Whitfield in the shotgun with Sidney Ousley to his left. Double tight on the set here for the Terriers. It's going to be a run to Ousley. Double handoff to the other Ousley as James is going to go left trying to get downfield. He's going to be at the 40, near ha far hash rather, down to the 45. And that's where the clock will stop. But the Mount Vernon Rams are going to pick up a big win here tonight, beating the Carbondale Terriers 55-14. to We'll take a break, come back, and talk all about it in your Schmidt Lake Cadillac postgame show. This is Rams football from WMIX Sports. Help tackle cancer with the MBTHS Future Business Leaders of America at the second annual Not Burning Rams Pink Out Game on Friday, October 17th. The Rams host the Centralia Orphans at J.D. Shields Memorial Stadium. Get your WMIX Sports Winning Edge Pink Rally Fouls for just $1. All proceeds go to the Susan D. Coleman for the Cure Foundation. Get your Pink Rally Fouls in advance at Winning Edge on 9th Street in Mount Vernon or grab a towel and official Pink Out t-shirt on game night from the Mount Vernon High School FBLA. It's that simple. Cheer the Rams on the victory over the Centralia Orphans and help tackle cancer. <laughs> it's the second annual Mount Vernon Rams Pink Out game, Friday, October 17th. Find your WMIX Sports Pink Rally Towels for just $1 at Winning Edge, 212 South 9th Street in Mount Vernon. Or contact FBLA advisor Julie Hayes at 246-5617. There's no other Toyota dealership like it in the region. It's totally techno, chic, and totally new. Tyler Toyota. Like car heaven. It's totally brand new. Totally built for you. Welcome to Tyler Toyota. The best car and truck buying experience in Southern Illinois. Total. Total. Totally. We're celebrating the grand opening. Newly renovated and highly celebrated Tyler Toyota. Totally. 
Toyota. The medicine shop in Mount Vernon provides personal health care on a level that no big box chain or mail order service can. That's why Consumer Reports ranks independent drugstores like the medicine shop number one in customer service and satisfaction. I'm pharmacist and owner Eric Black. Did you know that independent pharmacies like the medicine shop receive no kickbacks from the drug manufacturers? This means that the advice you get from our staff is based only on what's best for your health. Did you also know that we offer access to your medication when you need it? No long wait for hoping that the mailman shows up with your medicine before you run out. We employ local people and pay local taxes, which means a positive economic impact for this community. Finally, we know how busy your life is. That's why we offer free delivery to work or home. Give me a call today and I'll show you how easy it is to switch. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, 2339 Broadway, the Mount Vernon. So give us a call at 242-8776. Looking for a free checking account that still offers rewards for doing things you already do? Introducing Cha-Ching. Hi, this is Nina Reitnauer with People's National Bank. We want you to get the most out of your money, which is why we're offering Cha-Ching Cash Checking. Cha-Ching Cash lets you earn really high rates paid in cash each month. We'll even refund your ATM fees nationwide, so you can make any ATM your ATM. There's never a minimum balance to earn any of your Cha-Ching Cash rewards. Stop by People's National Bank or visit People's National Bank for details on our Cha-Ching checking. Qualifications and rules apply. Member FDIC. It's not easy to decide what you want to be when you grow up. Even if you're well into adulthood, so many options. Firefighter, welder, miner, nurse, artist, chef, police, architect, and more. Red Lake College offers over 100 degree and certificate programs. And now you can find the one that fits at the RLC Open House on Thursday, October 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Ina campus. Still not sure what you want to be? Be a warrior. See you at the Open House on Thursday evening, October 9th from 6 to 8 at the RLC campus in Ina. This is Mount Vernon Rams football from WMIX Sports. The Schmidt Chevrolet Cadillac postgame show starts now. And we're welcome you back. WMIX, WMIXSports.com, your Schmidt Chevrolet Cadillac postgame show. Rams win a big one here tonight at Carbondale, 55-14. to Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside. D.C., big win for the Rams tonight in a big way. Well, it is, and it's good to get a win. It's one of four you have to have, and for Mount Vernon, it's – what it is, it's one down, three to go. You feel good tonight. Then you go home and you got to figure out from there what do you have to do next to beat a Cahokia team that's handling Centralia very easily tonight. Well, what we have to do next is get you some scoring and stats as well as a scoreboard. We'll do that after a quick break on your Schmitzerlake Carbondale. Schmitzerlake Cadillac postgame show from Carbondale. Mount Vernon beats the Terriers 55-14. to We'll take a break, come back. This is your Schmitzerlake postgame show from WMIX Sports. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. Now is a great time to move your account to Community First Bank. With our new one account offering the highest interest rate in the market, free checking, and CD specials delivered by people you know and trust, why would you not bank with the market leader in Jefferson County? We offer five locations and seven ATMs and have been serving the Jefferson County market since 1906. Stop in and see why our bank is the fastest growing bank in Jefferson County. Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Come see the finest lineup of luxury cars on the road today. Cadillac at Schmidt Chevrolet Cadillac in Mount Vernon. Test drive the all-new 2015 Escalade. It's now in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Or choose the hot-selling SRX crossover with 308 horsepower direct injection V6. Its meticulously crafted interior makes this vehicle a dream to drive. And when it comes to service, there's Cadillac. Then there's everyone else. Hurry to Schmidt Chevrolet Cadillac, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Bad luck. Some people were just born with it. Hi, this is Chase Landers of Landers Collision Centers of Mount Vernon and Salem. We all know that someone who has that cartoon cloud hanging over their head, getting rained on whenever the sun is out. The full moon is their worst enemy, and if something can be spilled, dropped, broken, tipped over, or lost, it will somehow happen to this person. Landers Collision Centers have seen it all. Whether you turn the wheel too sharply backing out of your garage and tore the front end off of your vehicle, crunched your undercarriage running over a curb, or clipped your fender pulling into the ATM, Landers Collision Center has your back, and we certainly won't judge. As a direct repair facility for many insurance companies, we take care of just about everything, even getting you into a temporary vehicle while we restore yours. That's the Landers difference. Top to bottom, big or small, Landers fixes them all. Come see us in Mount Vernon and Salem and ask us about free detailing for the life of your vehicle. Or call 1-888-LANDERS 
That's one of Triple H Lance. This is Mount Vernon Rams football, powered by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Schmidt from Lake Cadillac postgame show. The Mount Vernon Rams beat the Carbondale Terriers 55-14. to Danny Zerwinski here in just a moment is going to tell us a little bit about that. First, we remind you, Community First Bank of the Heartland, the official voice of high school sports here on WMIX. Find them online at comfirstbank.net and read all about one checking. First drive of the game ended in a Rams touchdown. First defensive drive ended in a Carbondale touchdown, but that well past that, Danny Zerwinski, the Rams were dominant. I think it shows up in the scoring and stats. Well, that's a good thing for Mount Vernon. They did a very good job. And, of course, Mount Vernon with 25 first downs in the ball game compared to 12 for Carbondale. Turnover department, Carbondale had one. Mount Vernon had none. And the penalties, Mount Vernon had eight for 59. Carbondale had two for 20. The rushing department was all Mount Vernon, 405 to 161. Mount Vernon had 75 yards passing to 18 for Carbondale. So the way I have it figured, just under, just over 450 yards total for Mount Vernon to 179 for Carbondale as Mount Vernon wins 55-14. 55-14, your final here on your Schmidt for Lake Cadillac postgame show. We'll take another break. We'll come back. We'll have your player of the game and a final scoreboard update, and we'll wrap it up from Carbondale. Bottom of the hour on WMIX Mount Vernon, a free service from Withers Broadcasting. We'll come back after a quick break. This is Rams football from WMIX Sports. Raise your hand if you're tired of showing up for a service appointment only to sit around a waiting room. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealer at King City Chrysler Center. Our express lane fast oil changes and more provide quick, convenient service with no appointment needed. Our specialists are on hand to wait on you with lanes dedicated just for your oil changes, tire rotation, brake inspection, batteries, bulbs, wiper blades, air filter replacements, and more. We will also perform complimentary vehicle inspections with every oil change. We work around your schedule, open weekdays from 7.30 until 5, and Saturdays from 8 a.m. until noon. See Express Lane Fast Oil Changes and more for all of your service needs, and we will get you back on the road quick. We're located at King City Crisis Center at 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois. Just another reason you can count on us. Hi, this is your local State Farm agent, Tony Wilk, and proud supporter of the Mount Vernon Rams. Whether you are a new customer or one that has been loyal to State Farm for years, let me take this opportunity to thank you for your business. If you are not currently with State Farm and are looking for someone you can trust to handle your insurance or financial service needs, let me invite you into our office. You will have a local agent you can work with, backed by the industry leader in State Farm. Find us in the phone book, online, or flag the State Farm Jeep down if you have to. However you find us, we look forward to talking to you soon. This is Mount Vernon Rams football from WMIX Sports. The Tony Wilk State Farm Player of the Game is next. Welcome back, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us for your Schmidt from Lake Cadillac postgame show. Rams win a tough one here at Carbondale, 55 to 14. We promised you one final uh -huh. scoreboard update. We also owe you a State Farm POG. All right, let's go scores. Final. Like AJ idea. beat Pinckneyville 20 to 14. This is um, Nashville lead, trails Carterville 49-46, but the Hornets have the football with 17 seconds to go. Ducoin beats Sparta 42-18. Benton goes on the road to Harrisburg to beat the Bulldogs 13-9. End of three quarters, Heron leads Massac County 69-28. And Murfreesboro beats Frankfurt on the road 63-6. In the South 7, Marion beats Altaw 49-7. Last moments of the game, Cokia leads Centrea 44-20. Final, Carmi beats Hamco 42-8. Chester over CZR 47-21. And another dandy of where has the defense gone. Fairfield and Eldorado are tied at 52. That is late in the fourth quarter. Mount Vernon and the Week 9 opponent, Mount Carmel, got beat in Jasper, Indiana tonight. <laughs> 57 nothing. Uh, I wondered. Uh, Matt Scuta leads Triad late 49-27. So Triad Week 3 opponent loses for Mount Vernon. Effingham beats Taylorville 28-7. So Week 1 opponent, Mount Vernon loses. 
Highland leads Civic to end of three, 35-28. Columbia over Freeburg, that's a final 31-21. And Bree Central beat Redbud, 36-22. Carterville beats Nashville, 49-46. And Heron beats Massac, 69-28. I'm, I'm, I just have to ask again, where is defense in high school football? I don't know, but they find it, they'll let you know. Unbelievable. Is that it? That's it. There we go. Scoreboard update presented by Bird Watson Drug. They're celebrating 40 years tomorrow at their location at 12th and Main. Not it. Fairfield and El Dorado will go to overtime tied at 52 at the train yard. Well, even though that's going to overtime, they're still celebrating 40 years tomorrow. Bird Watson Drug, 12th and Main in Mount Vernon. They'll have all kinds of fun for you. You'll want to go out there, help them celebrate it. WMIX will be broadcasting live. Should be a fun time as they have food, dipping dots, bounce houses, raffles, and so much more. We can't leave, though, without a Tony Wilt State Farm player of the game as another score comes 50 in. 50-20, to 20, Cahokia beats Centralia. All right, we got that final in there. Player of the game. What about the offensive line? <laughs> yeah. Those guys work hard. I don't want to say harder than anybody. But those guys work very hard. Yeah. You saw all the yards on the ground tonight. You saw all the offensive touchdowns. You even saw Dalton McGowan have a little bit more time. I know that's special teams, but, I mean, pretty well the same guys up front yeah. each and every time out. So, congratulations. Great effort by the Rams O-line tonight. We'll get them on WMIXSports.com as soon as we can get all their mugs together and one picture. So we'll be happy to do that. Congratulations to the Ram Offensive Line tonight. Pave the way for this success, and they deserve the award. From Tony Wilt, your State Farm agent in Mount Vernon, who would love to help you with all of your insurance needs, give him a call. Find him in his office. Look for him online at TonyWilt.com or try to flag down the white State Farm Jeep around town and get to a better state with State Farm. That's going to do it for us tonight. We're back on the air tomorrow. We'll talk with a very happy Rams football coach, Jared Shader, tomorrow on the Saturday Sports Show after the 8 o'clock news. Right here on AM 940 and WMIXSports.com. Full lineup to be posted later all over social media. You'll want to join us tomorrow. We promise you that. The next Rams broadcast is next Friday from home. 94.1 FM, AM 940. Video at WMIXSports.com. The Rams host the Cahokia Comanche. Should be a dandy in the South Summit Conference. Join us next week. For Danny Zerwinski, for Jeff Crow, for Hunter Schrader back at our Mount Vernon studio. For all of us at WMIX Sports. Thank you for accessing our broadcast tonight. I'm Chris Hugo reminding you the final score. The Mount Vernon Rams 55, the Carbondale Terriers 14. So long from Carbondale.